Let's uh, <laughs> let's, uh take a break. All right. And we'll be back. No, 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 no. We're here. No, no, no. Got to get rid of that at the end of some of the old Yes. Bits. Just a little warm-up bit for everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the Opie and Anthony Show. We got brand new Mike Tyson. Uh, to talk about today. He's back in the news, so we'll uh, cover that a little later in the show. Yeah, a little later. Anthony, we got to welcome our our brand new affiliates. Yes. WCMF in Rochester, New York. Hello. Yes. A new city. The virus has spread to western New York, and we couldn't be happier, Anthony. Isn't that great? There's a cute little story as far as WCMF in Rochester goes. A lot of people may think it's because I kind of started my radio career in Rochester. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice. It's nice to be back uh, on the Rochester airwaves. Sure. But another example of uh, Opie and Anthony winning. We always win in the end. Always win in the end. Don't want to bore people too much with this story because we've said it, we've explained it, uh, I don't know, probably a hundred times now in the media. Yeah. But uh, Ant and I were doing a very successful radio show in Boston when we were told to leave the state and to never return. Yeah, we got the boot. We said the mayor of Boston was dead uh, on April Fool's a few years back, and they fired us. Everyone knows that. Right. Well, the guy who fired us, the actual guy, the uh, head muckety mucks uh, employee suit guy that does the firing, uh, was, was a guy named Don Belukas. Don Belukas called us into a hotel conference room up in Boston and said... Uh, I hate to meet you under these circumstances, but um, we're going to have to terminate the contract. Right. Oh, I, he did say before that, I hear you're really good and you're making a lot of money for the company, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, we're, in a, we're in a multi-billion dollar merger and uh, we're going to have to terminate your contract. We'll terminate your contract. Remember that day, Anthony? Yes, I do. We were kicked to the curb, it never to a... return, and we really didn't know what was going to happen with our... Little careers at that point. It was a turning point for the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah. A rallying point, actually. Yeah, we lucked out. You know, I yes, mean, I, I encourage every uh, radio radio guy in America to say the mayor... Of uh, your city. Of your city, uh, that the mayor died. And see, if you could, like, uh, you know, get your career up and going after that. Parlay it into the number one market, though, with syndication. It's Go not, ahead. It's not a guarantee. Give it a whirl. And we really didn't know what the hell was going to happen to you and I. Because you could be uh, somebody that says something outrageous, and then you're sitting there going, "What are doodle? Why, uh, why am I uh, broadcasting uh, nowhere?" So there's a little saying on this show. We say Opie and Anthony always win in the end. Yeah. Another fun example of that today, because uh, the only reason you're hearing us in Rochester, New York, today is because of Don Belukas. Don Belukas, the Terminator, the man that completely destroyed our careers a little over three years ago. Yeah. He had to actually, what they call, sign off on this. Right, because now... He, he was the last word. He works for <laughs> Infinity Broadcasting as well now. Yeah. Through this whole merger thing, he he uh, joined Infinity. Yep. And he's in, one of the stations he's in charge of is WCMF in Rochester. So he had to agree to have us on his airway. <laughs> 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 and I was up there recently, and uh, I guess Don Belukas uh, went to, like, the, the you know, the head muckety mucks up there. Yeah. And said, uh, man, I, I hear Opie and Anthony don't really like me. Well, you fired us, you tool. You fired us, and we haven't talked to you since. Yeah. Do the math. Figure nah, it out. Nah, nah, time night to contract. They got back to me. They were talking bad about me on their radio show. Why would they do that? Oh, I don't know. You left us without jobs for a while. Because you fired us. You fired us? After a week of jerking us around. What about that woman? Who was that woman that um, was uh, handling the investigation? Believe me, this was such a huge deal. They had an investigation. I'll tell you who the woman was, and it was the old GM of WCMF in Rochester. Was it? I told you I used to work for her. Yeah, but I, there's so many people that uh, you mentioned. When I started I my radio remember. career, I was just a, a little punk in Rochester. Yeah. And uh, Susan McDonald was the GM. That was and, her? And she was in charge yeah. of WCMF. So she goes, they were just blowing smoke. It was ridiculous. They knew damn well we were getting fired. But they waited a week to try to see if we'd roll over on any, anyone else. So they had this internal investigation to see who was involved in this mayor dead prank. And uh, the first day we sit down with uh, Susan, was it? Did you say Susan? Uh, Susan McDonald. She, uh, she goes... All right. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to ask some questions. We're just going to get to the bottom of what, we, what happened. Let's um, get this over with quick. and Let's get you back on the air. <laughs> <laughs> get you back on the air. Right when she said that, I just looked at her and was like, like I was disgusted. 
No, she like, I know damn well that we're not getting back on the air. Her whole job was to try to figure out who else they were going to fire with us. Exactly. But we took the hit. We didn't, we didn't take anyone with us. Dave Dickless, our uh, PD. Guys, on the phone. How many phone calls did you get that were like, Guys, hi, it's Dave. Um, Listen, uh, could you just say that um, I didn't come in until the last uh, break of the show? Could you say that? Ass. Yeah, the PD. Well, we've talked about that, too. He just rolled over on everyone he could. We'll save that story for when we're live in Boston. In Boston. But basically, yeah, the PD, Dave Douglas, uh, called me at home begging me to nope. to keep him out of this and, and begging me to change the facts around. Even though I'm like, look, man, the, the show's on tape. He goes, it's really important that uh, you didn't start the whole mayor is dead prank until... After 5 o'clock. When I was long gone. After 5 o'clock. Because I'll blame it on Brucey e. Mittman and the Shwoogies. <laughs> so he goes, you got to promise me that you'll say, uh, you know, it happened after 5 o'clock. Right? Yeah. Like, Dave, I can't promise you that. There's tape out there. People are going to think we're liars. We're going into the gazel, <laughs> Dave. So hello, Rochester and WCMF. And hello, Don, Don Belukas. <laughs> hello. Hello, we're here again. <laughs> and no, Joe, you'll never find out the third mystery party that was involved in the Mayor Dead scheme. No, but he's doing very well in morning radio. Yeah. <clears throat> he called me and begged me. He says, dude, come on. Did he? Oh, yeah. Recently? Oh, yeah. Oh. Wow. That would be a great push for him. I, don't, I think enough time has gone by. Come on, blurt it out. <laughs> no, man. He's a good friend from the old I days. I know. There'll come a time he'll want to come on the air with us. Yeah. He was the fake news reporter for our little, the mayor is dead. And I can't believe the industry hasn't figured out who it is yet. I know. Bluto, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey. You guys see Planet of the Apes this weekend? Ah! 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 Anthony. You yeah. Mean, tell him how I was ranting and raving that bag office. Yeah, right I, when I walked in. Pluto, I freaking hated it. Right you when too, I right? In, right when I walk in the office, Rick goes, did you see Planet of the Apes? And Opie just starts screaming, don't get me started again. <laughs> Sucked. It just occurred, me, occurred to me that the gorillas in Planet of the Apes are actually smarter and, and more civil than Mike Tyson. There you go. Yeah. And the Charlton Heston scene? Yeah. See that? I, don't, I wanted to cry. I don't need a gun message in the middle of my movie, thank you very much. Even, oh, even if it's being you. delivered by an old Charlton Heston ape guy. Oh, my God. When he said that line, I wanted to cry. Damn you them. stinking humans. Damn them all to hell. And the comic relief where it wasn't needed just felt like Star Wars all over again. Uh, does, does does Tim Burton show his cute little movies to his friends before he decides to, you know, release it to the world? Dude, but he's the type of guy that no matter who he showed it to, they would go, oh, my God, that's great. That's great, boss. The only yeah, thing yeah, that saved that movie was Tim Roth and the special effects. Mark Wahlberg could not carry a movie if it had a handle on it. <laughs> I said Mark Wahlberg couldn't carry a, a bag of groceries. He was horrible. The only <laughs> he was, thing was the, he was the worst, man. Tim Roth was good, but he was constantly looking through his eyebrows. He and always had his, his, his he head had down. He was looking out of the top of his eyes the whole time with that voice. Right. He was really good. I love you, honey bunny. <laughs> <laughs> he was really good. Okay, this is a robbery. <laughs> but the new Nova? Yeah. Even though it wasn't based on... Uh, no, no. Uh, that chick is hot. She should have been naked, though. Should have been more naked, for gooder. For my eight fifty nine fifty whatever I'm paying for a movie these days, she should have been topless At the end, something. she kind of looked hot. Um, I'll tell you, though. The the movie, uh, very disappointed. I liked it because I like uh, Planet of the Apes. This I liked the, the makeup. I liked the... Uh, you know, some of the special effects as far as them jumping around and stuff. It was pretty cool. Uh, but the, there was no story to speak of. Horrible. Just, like, nothing going on. Right. And um, the ending, I was just like, oh, now people are screaming, shut up, don't say... Uh, it was just retarded. <sighs> you know, they, and they've talked about it in the news, not not giving away the ending, which I won't do, don't worry. But they call it, like, a Twilight Zone type okay. ending. Let me Let me tell you something right now. What? If I get worked up enough, I will. No, no. Oh, because be, I'm that people, pissed off. And people I'm, will tune out. No, and I'm thinking I need to give away the ending no. to save these fine folks some money today, Anthony. No. Oh. Holy S. Uh, why couldn't Tim Burton just take the original Planet of the Apes yeah. and, and followed it line for line and just made it cooler with special effects and better gorilla costumes? He thought he could revisit oh, it and Lord. do a better job just making a completely new movie, which I don't disagree with. I think that could have been cool. 
But there was nothing, and there were so many loose ends. It was ridiculous. We both said it. We both said this. It was it was Back to the Future with apes. Back to the Future. It was Back to the Future with apes. I mean, you talk about look time I machine. Could, I could give every Marky Mark. Right. Was Marty McFly. <laughs> yeah. Marky Mark. Marty McFly. Uh, Thade, Senator Thade, Tim Roth was Biff. Biff. He's right? Biff. Yeah. He's Biff. The actual ship was the DeLorean. That was your DeLorean. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Come on. Bring me the space, man. Never said in the movie. I know. Well, Marky Mark, you're going to have to work your space pod up to 1.3 thousand gigawatts or gigawatts. It's called gigawatts, and it was 1.2. 1.21. One, one, one. It was. It was Back to the Future 2. The ending of it revert to Back to the Future 2, where Biff has to go back to 1955. He stole the space, uh, the uh, space, the uh, time machine, the DeLorean. Goes back to 1955, changes history, so that when Marty McFly comes back from uh, the year uh, 2015 and goes back to 1985, it's a different 1985. Thank you. There's your answer. Whoever saw it and toiled over the ending. That was the ending. And it's, it's nice to know after 400 years you can just dust off the inside of the spaceship and, and, and get some valuable information from it, even though the, the outside the, the spaceship is like a petrified Petrified. Forest now. It was so weathered and petrified, yet the sliding glass doors worked. Right. You get a storm and your back door sliding glass door doesn't work because there's sand and dirt in it. This thing's been sitting for 400 years or whatever it was. Hey, a little lid just dusted it off and it's ready to go. He didn't even dust it off. He shoved his hand in a little thing. What about the, the door part where he's just dusting off the, the control oh, panel? The, the monitor. That yeah. was great. He's pulling chunks of rock off of the face of the monitor so we could see the computer readout. Great. That's good. That's good. I spill a, a, a rum and coke while I'm on my computer and splash a little on the screen. That's still there. It's still on my screen. This guy's got rocks. Rolling on his monitor. Tony. What's up, guys? Hey. hey. Seventy million dollars, my ass. Well, the movie made seventy million over the freaking weekend. It well. did make seventy million. I saw it in Huntington, and I'll tell you, everyone left the theater like no one. You can tell when a movie, you know, is disappointing when people just walk out. You, you know, that's like, why they did that ending. So you were too confused to go. That sucked. Like no one walked out going that sucked. You walk out like you just got stunned. Or you just got, like, gassed or something. Everyone was just like, huh? What? But I... And then he went... But then... Major Nelson, he came in, but then all of a sudden he's back. But then... But who... How did... You're all confused. You're too confused to say, that sucked. Here's a, here's a sign when you know you're in a bad movie, when you constantly go to the person next to you that you went with and say, hey, are you awake? <laughs> did Dude. she steal your blankie? The only good <laughs> guys, one more point. I couldn't bring yeah, it. hold on, hold on. I, right, could, dude, oh, I couldn't bring the blankie because uh, it, you know it's the first week of Planet of the Apes. It was packed. Yeah, my late night movie was packed. Couldn't bring the blankie. Yeah, down. every theater was packed. Go ahead, Tony. Dude, one, two things. The only thing that made it worth it for me was uh, the, the Earth, the, the human chick with the big bobos, man. She, she should have got her in sexier outfits. Should have got her wetter with the gorilla was spraying down Heston. They should. That would have been nice. They should have had the famous hose scene with that. Oh, that girl. throws him down. Oh. Dude, we, they, they didn't treat him as badly as they treated him in the original. Hey, open your theater. Did they pull an Animal House? Cause food was flying at that effing screen, man. And we pulled an Opie on the way out. We ruined it for about five thousand people waiting online. <laughs> it's all so good. like f all of you. The movie bit. All right, cool. Thanks, Later, Tony. fellas. It was just, uh, thank God for Chris Christopherson's uh, Chris Christopherson's pivotal role in the movie that really um, changed the face of the whole movie. What a useless uh, guy that was to have in there. He dies and no one cares. No one cares. You no didn't, one cared. You didn't figure out who the hell he was. I think he was the hot chick's father. Yeah. But was it? Yeah. She didn't seem to care that he died either. She no one cried. cried. <laughs> no one cared about anybody. And who was the the Zira uh, character? Oh, what's her name there? The uh, the, uh, the uh, here's here's something. Can you explain why she wants to help the humans? Janet Jackson. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Why? But well, she seems to be some type of animal activist, like we have here on Earth. But why don't you explain? Uh, there are some humans that are uh, don't like it the way we treat some animals. So there, there were some apes that don't like the way they treat humans. 
<sighs> but explain like but they, why, how, who, they, exactly. They could have went a little deeper with that. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's something that happened in her past where she has this uh, sensitivity toward humans or yeah. something. And then they had him as house servants, but then they had him as animals and... They were treating them like like dirt, but then they had them in their house, I, handling their food. I, see, I didn't get that. Dave, what's going on? Hey guys, what's uh, happening? The movie Blue. I thought so, man. I I I, I knew it was going to though. Hey, I'm telling you, uh, dude sitting in front of me fell asleep. He was actually snoring. It was a riot. A lot of people were asleep in the theater I was at. And how come the woman that was the human rights activist? Why does she have a British accent? What was up with that? I don't you know. You know, I mean, weak. Just totally weak. All right. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I hear uh, Big, Kev, Kev, Big Kev's question about uh, Planet of the Apes. Oh, where are we going? All right. All right. Uh, Big Kev. Hey, what's up? Now, I finally saw it. Uh-huh. What's the question? Where'd the horses come from? <laughs> See, a lot of people had these, like, little loose ends. There were horses. Now, supposedly, the apes got there because of what happened uh, in the movie, this big spaceship crash thing. There were no horses on the ship. And they said the planet was abandoned. Right. Nothing there except what the spaceship brought. And all of a sudden there's horses. Ugh, ridiculous. ridiculous. My, hey, you already covered my favorite part of the movie, which was when Chris Christopherson met a timely demise. <laughs> timely. That's a very timely. <laughs> it couldn't have happened quicker. I know. Kev, that's your Awful. only question. Where do the horses come from? No, huh? that's the only one I'm going to How ask. about the chick getting over a fear of water within seconds, and, and the rest of the, the, the monkeys and apes can't figure that one out? No, that's the only question I want to ask, because I don't even give a crap enough to ask <laughs> any other questions. All right. Thanks, Big Kev. Yeah. Later. Now, now. Helena Bonham Carter, she's an ape, and they have this huge fear of water. They cannot even go near the water. So the humans use it to their advantage and, like, ride horses and swim across this river, and the apes don't follow them, Opie. How about that? Uh, meanwhile, Helena Bonham Carter is on uh, Dirk Diggler's back as they're swimming across <laughs> the, uh, the uh, river. Now, she's petrified, but she did cross the lake and found that she was no worse for wear. Right. You think these big, badass gorillas and apes can't suck it up and muster up the courage to cross uh, the water on horseback or on a boat or something? Uh, another observation uh, uh, about the movie. Who, yeah. Who's the the guy from the Green Mile? What's his name again? One of the main characters. Uh, the big guy from the Green Mile. <laughs> Anthony Michael Clark. Duncan. No. Duncan. Clark Duncan. Duncan. Clark, Michael, Michael Clark, Clark Duncan. Anthony Michael Hall, Duncan yeah. Clark. <laughs> Anyone else notice that all his lines were spoken through like a Halloween mask? Yes. <laughs> he sounded like Mar Marv Albert. Yes. yes. <laughs> it sounded like he was talking through a Halloween mask. Tim, it's not working. Hello. Yeah. Dub his lines or something. This is what you're hearing as he's going after the spaceman. Um, yes, sir. I'm what? What? He had a little Darth Vulgar to his voice, too. <laughs> Awful. Ridiculous. Awful. Awful movie. Awful. Like I said, I just like the fact that it was Planet of the Apes and they updated the uh, the costumes and the makeup. Rick loved it. it. Rick loved it. Well, Rick, loved you it. will know Rick will and love every fact, crappy movie. I didn't movie. say I loved it. I said you better it. than I thought it was going to be. And you liked because it. Because everything going into it said this is going to suck. Stinky so when you go there it. expecting for it to suck, and it doesn't really suck that bad. Get Stinky in here, too. Earl liked it. Earl liked it. <laughs> Earl liked it. <laughs> With all the cheesy lines, can we all just get along? Uh, and then the, uh, the original Planet of the Apes lines that they incorporated in, oh. where... Um, uh, Michael Anthony Hall Duncan Clark guy says, <laughs> yeah. uh, says, uh, get your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human. Ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, don't so rehash cheesy, it. Man. And Charlton Heston laying in his deathbed, damn them, damn them all to hell. <laughs> and then he just croaks right there. <laughs> damn them, damn me, you, them all to hell. What am I, an ape? The funny thing is, I've aged so badly, they needed no makeup. I look like a goddamn monkey. My line sucked. That was awful. I didn't need a loincloth in this one, for my scrotum looks like a loincloth. So stretched and weathered by time and gravity in the elements. Look at my yam bag. It looks like rawhide. Yuck. I get a scene laying in bed. Great. Ooh, thanks for throwing me a bone, you tool. 
And why did I have to give an anti-gun message? Everyone knows I love guns. Humans. Humans. Their intelligence goes hand in hand with their cruelty. Didn't Dr. Zayas say that to me? I'm no stupid. I remember that. And I'm senile. What movie was this? Oh, yes, Planet of the Apes. I thought it was the remake of Omega Man. And I was saying, why am I wearing a monkey mask? People! Silent Green is people! Silent! What? Oh, sorry, Tim. I thought it was uh, Ben Hur. Oh, that's from what? Where am I? How many laps on this chariot do I have to make it? Damn you! Damn you, Tim Burton! This movie sucks! Damn you to hell! Let my people go! Oh, wait, I'm an ape. <laughs> That's stupid. My people are free. Uh, I had Nova in the original. Nova. I taught you to smile. She was on the back of my horse, giving me the reach around. <laughs> and now look at this one. I got nothing. I lay in a bed. I talk about a gun. And I talk about it like I hate guns. I love guns. From my gold dead hand. Yeah, did anyone else notice uh, Paula Abdul's uh, cameo? <laughs> <laughs> With that, uh, what, what was that big... The big orangutan guy. Yeah. Whatever he was. <laughs> Paul Abdul. Paul Abdul swinging from the chandelier topless with that, a furry can. Funniest scene, man, when, when, she's, when she's getting ready for sex. Uh, that was Tim Burton's squeeze there, uh, Lisa Marie. Eddie Trunk, what's up? What's up, guys? I just had a Saturday tell you. Night Rocks. What's that? Saturday Night Rocks. Absolutely. What's up, Betty? I just had to tell you, I'm a huge Planet of the Apes fan. Who would win in a fight, uh, Planet of the Apes or Kiss? What? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know who would win in a fight, four of the Planet of the Apes or Kiss with their superpowers. I don't know. That would make a good movie, I guess. Maybe that would be the next Kiss movie. I don't know. But I had to tell you. I How came... does White Snake fit into this whole Planet of the Apes thing, Eddie? <laughs> Listen, I came in Saturday. And first of all, Earl told me he loved the film, and I had just come from seeing it. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Earl, why did you love the film? It made Earl feel empowered. <laughs> what? Earl, why did you love the film, really? The, mo the whole movie's a goof. You don't, you, you lo if you walk in with no expectations, you'll love the movie. Oh, great. You walk in with no expectations, <laughs> everything rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, that's the dumbest statement I, I ever no, heard. I just, when I'm plunking down 850, I'm, I don't go to the theater with no expectations. No expectations. I'm expecting an effing lot. And anyway, when you have an original movie, you expect something. This when is Planet of the Apes, my friend. I've been waiting for this for years. years. That's how Earl talks to the boss. When you have no expectations of what I do, <laughs> I rule. <laughs> so maybe he just looks at his movie. Movies the same way. <laughs> then you're doing <laughs> Come on, Earl. No expectations. It's playing the apes. It wasn't yeah. like some movie you didn't know, you know, what it was going to be. I wasn't about. expecting any deep, heavy movie. I was just like going and watching as a goof, and that's what I did. And I had a good time. A goof. Earl. It was 32 years people waited for this. <laughs> for this goof. I know. What are you With no about, expectations. <laughs> What I was calling to tell you guys, though, is like last night I was watching that uh, Ebert and Roper at the movies. Yeah. And Richard Roper actually said that this film was better than the original. Holy. Uh, how much money did he get paid to say that? I have no the idea. Makeup? The other thing yes. that, that was amazing I wanted to tell you real quick was that Entertainment Weekly had a great point. They were talking about the chick that played the Nova character, and they were saying that, it's the first time that 32 years has passed and the character was actually wearing more clothing than the one in the original 32 ah, years ago. Yeah, she yeah they should have had her in uh, l less clothes. I think she has a birth effect or something. <laughs> no, she, I've seen her in less clothes on the websites. She is hot. And she was actually, the original girl, Linda Harrison, was actually in this film for two seconds if you saw her. She was? Yeah, she was in one of the cages being carted away and they had a quick shot of like a cameo of her like as they were moving away in the Damn, car. gravity's a bitch. <laughs> no S. Eddie Trunk? How did Ronnie James Dio like the movie? <laughs> I don't know, man. I'll see if I can get back to you on that. All right, man. Thank All right, you, man. Thank you, Eddie. See you guys. Eddie Trunk does Saturday Night Rocks here in New York. That's right. Does a good job with that. Earl. Why did you like the movie? Seriously. There you go. No expectations. What else? Because it was free. That too. Oh, <laughs> he went to the free screening. <laughs> free. Like my people. Let them go. Jay, what's going on? Free them from Pharaoh. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, Jay. Uh, well, I knew it was bad when you leaned over to me eight times during the movie to say, dude, are you awake? Oh, this is Jay. Yeah. Oh, Jay. What's up, Jay? Jay. Hey, oh, that chick was hot, man. Yeah. Well, she was smoking hot, but... 
Mary Pickford used to have more lines in her movies. <laughs> <laughs> a Mary Pickford reference. <laughs> Holy Jesus. Do you actually consider that, you know, part of a resume? <laughs> no. Don't you have to speak? No ass. I had a problem with Chris Christopherson, too. Yeah. I, I don't think that was scripted. I mean, you don't have a big star like that dies in the first 20 minutes. I think he realized the movie was so bad he just killed himself right then and there. <laughs> he ran into the ape. Right. No, you're supposed to keep running with your people. <laughs> nah, screw this. No, I want out of this mess right now. I got one more problem. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, did that orangutan ape not have ice in his glass? Ice, yes. They he had, had ice. ice he in was his tinkling glass. tinkling ice in the glass. Where did that come from? Same place the horses came from. <laughs> they didn't have electricity, right? No. Yeah, They're so how did they make they... ice? Yeah. And there wasn't any snow-capped mountains there. No. So I had a problem I with that. I think they did have electricity in the kitchen. You know, it was all lit up, but you didn't yeah, but get any fire torches. No, I saw, like, torches when, when, he, uh, when he cut that one lamp down or whatever it is. Uh, that big chandelier thing, it burst into flames. Wait, was that electric, though? Lamp? I don't think so. No, it wasn't electric. No. It wasn't a, no. It was a, so, no. All right. Just four small problems. If they had electric, they wouldn't need those big dopey locks on the human cages <laughs> with the big dopey key that Dirk Diggler could pick with his schlong. <laughs> <laughs> In two seconds, he was through that one. <laughs> all right, Jay. Jeez. Take it easy. Hey. Later, Jay. Yeah. There he goes, Jay. Uh, right. Buddy Jay, look at that. Him checking out. out. It's like the old days. Matt, what's going on? Hey, Matt. Matt. He has a good point, but all right. He says, how the hell did they become gorillas when they all started off as chimps? Yeah, well, I guess they had some baby gorillas on the, uh, and orangutans on, on the uh, big ship. And they were genetically altered, Opie. That's how they, uh, <sighs> went back to the future. Back to the future with apes. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Dirk Diggler. <laughs> Wanna go back in time. Dun -dun 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 -dun. <laughs> we have to take our first break, and we, we can continue a little bit on this. I haven't seen one good uh, movie this summer. We'll put a wire on the clock tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am old for like six at this point. You hate every movie. Mummy Returns, Blue. Two I, like Blue. The Mummy Returns. I like The Mummy Returns. Like The Mummy Returns. Except Planet for the, the kid. Blue. Yeah. Didn't like the kid. I like that. But well, you uh, like Memento, right? Planet of the that Apes. Was a, that was a summer. Love, and Rick liked chocolate. And Rick liked the chocolate. The chocolate. The chocolate. <laughs> Which is the French uh, title for Planet of the Apes. The chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. Opie and Anthony. The Robert Downey Jr. is a radio. Right. We can't leave anything alone. Let's hear a mother-daughter queef over the phone. You Maybe. pick artistic subjects. Opie and Anthony. Finally, the rock returns to WWF. Raw is war. Rock, are you still worthy of being called the most electrifying man in sports entertainment today? WWF Raw is war. Live at 9, 8 central tonight on TNN. GoldenPalace.com. <laughs> God damn, Vince. Rock's coming back. Can't wait yeah. for that. Why go to Vegas when you can go to GoldenPalace.com? They're going to bring Vegas to you. Get the best seat in the house. It's always available at GoldenPalace.com where you can play the biggest selection of quality casino games on the net. Absolutely free. GoldenPalace.com. They got all your favorite casino games. They got blackjack, craps, roulette, tons of slots, even seven progressive machines with huge jackpots. Log on to play. Check out. They got online personals, contests, and sweepstakes. Try it today. All free, all fun, all at GoldenPalace.com. A pioneer in the online gaming industry. GoldenPalace.com. The most advanced, most reliable, and simply the best casino on the Internet. Download all the thrill of a live casino right into your home computer with GoldenPalace.com. Gaming at its finest. GoldenPalace.com. Sponsor of the Man Boob Contest. GoldenPalace.com. Go there. You can win a trip to Jamaica on Air Jamaica and stay at Hedonism 3, an all-inclusive resort for eight days and seven nights. GoldenPalace.com. This is the place to go. For your um, online gaming, goldenpalace.com. Opie and Anthony. 1027 WNEW. And we're back with the Opie and Anthony show. If you're not in uh, the New York area and you want to get a hold of us, 866-277-4WOW. Reggie, what's going on? Reggie. Freddy. Freddy? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Freddy. Hey, how you, do, how you guys doing? Oh, good, Freddy. Uncle Freddy. Hey, what's, up, what's, up, what's up, 
Just you guys out in Philly, my friend just turned me on you guys about a month or so ago. You yeah, guys are great. Cool. Love you guys. Thank you, Freddie. What do you got? It's like, okay. Now, the Indians or whatever, they're afraid of water, right? Uh-huh. One chick gets on back. Mark Wahlberg's back. One the water, whatever. Couldn't follow his story with the phone line. His phone was all screwy. Let's try James. James, you're next on the Opie and Anthony show. What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Maybe hey. you could explain this to me. Yeah. Uh, they crash on this unknown, desolate planet, right? Yeah. And then Mark, Mark Wahlberg, whatever, he goes back to Earth. It's a completely different planet. How come there were apes there? How did that planet, other planet, get affected? A hey, dopey ass. Didn't you listen to my Back to the Future 2 analogy? But it's a different planet. He could go back to the future. He'd be on that same planet. No, he yeah. wouldn't. He flew back to Earth. He went through time and space. He went to Earth, back to Earth. Rent up Back to the Future. They explain, right, right. So, they so explain planet of the apes And there's like a million humans all over the place. No, there's apes, you d- douchebag. Because uh, uh, Thade got there first. So right he, back he, to the he, future. Thade's Biff. Right, so, so Marky the- Mark did. Dirk Dingler, Diggler <laughs> is Marty McFly. That's it. That's all you got to know. We explained The it. pods, the little space pods, is the DeLorean. <laughs> it works perfectly if you use that. Adam, okay? Adam, what's up? Yo, all I want to know is I want to thank you guys. Why? About a month ago, ONA, you guys said that this movie was going to be released late. It was going to suck. You guys said Pearl Harbor came out Memorial Day, and then I don't know what came out the fourth. And you guys said this movie was gonna bomb, and I'm gl- glad I listened to you. Dark Diggler, you have to get to the enchantment under the sea dance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go listen to myself later. So Dark Diggler. We're trying to find someone that enjoyed the movie, but so far... Uh, he should have just smacked people with no his good. Dirk Diggler big, huge junk that he pulled out at the end of the Boogie Nights. Just start smacking the apes around with this junk. <laughs> Dirk Diggler. How bummed are the girls when they finally get Marky Mark in bed and realize that was a prop for the movie? Macky Mac. What happened, Marky Mac? Marky Mark, what happened to your junk? I saw the movie. It looked huge. What happened, Mac? You got the Irish curse, Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Brother. <laughs> All right. Awful. Uh, Vinny, uh, on the instant feedback, I'm wondering if Bill Clinton is feeling what Mark Wahlberg felt in the movie today. Oh, oh ouch. We got to be really careful how we explain this to everybody. What I, we saw he was um, today opening up his brand new offices in uh, Harlem. In He's Harlem. up in Harlem now. He was going to get... Uh, office space right across from our station here in New York at Carnegie Hall, which would have ruled. Man, I said, son of a bitch, how you doing? Oh, and I, I'll be up later when you got right. the lesbian couch. You guys go to the Crystal Cafe. I'll go with you. I, I need a fight you. team myself. Hey, baby Ray Ray, could you get me a Snapple? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have been great. It would have been in our neighborhood. But he bowed to the pressure that uh, it was costing too much money mm-hmm. for some reason. I don't know. And uh, he went up to Harlem. He called his buddy Charlie Wrangle and said, Hey, yo, what's up, my nigga? Can I get some office space up here, yo? Yeah, I'm, I hear that. I love the guy. Yeah, he, he's fantastic. But now, you know, watching him uh, give his speech in Harlem, there was not one white person around him on the stage or in the audience. The only white people were the reporters that were reporting. Swear to God. And you you were watching him, and after going to the movies this weekend, all I could imagine was him going, my pod just crashed in the uh, river <laughs> up here. And I, what happened? <laughs> what what happened? <laughs> I, I tore my space suit, and I got to get back somehow. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, that's what that's what their instant feedbacking hoping. Why well, do the bone dry? Yeah. <laughs> Bone dry. What does he need an office for anyway? Uh, what, Clinton? Hey, uh, old dirty, what? Well, it, it works better when you're talking to him. Oh, line. yeah, no doubt. Yo, what? Number one, what's, what does he need an office for? He's a big businessman. What's he doing? He's giving he needs, speeches. No, he needs that office so he can get a little action. <laughs> you know what I'm get saying? Get some tail. That's the little love nest up right, there. Uptown. You don't sit big old <laughs> desk. I'm going to bang your fat ass right <laughs> on. This guy has been in New York probably a couple dozen times since leaving office. We have not seen him with his wife once. Oh, no. And she is the senator from yeah. New York. From New York. <laughs> he gave some cockamamie excuse today. You know, uh, the junior senator from New York would have loved to have been here. He didn't. He never said Hillary today. Yeah. In his speech, didn't say it. 
He goes, the junior senator and Chelsea would have loved to have been here today, but uh, there was uh, so she uh, her homework got eaten by the dog or something. <laughs> like he came up with some lame excuse, but it's an excuse every time. She is never with this guy anymore. Now he's got his posh office space. I'm going to get me some of that tanned ass. Let me tell you, I'm going to ride that tanned ass. <laughs> hey, Ben, you still there? He loves it. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. What's up? Yo, y'all do do, y'all do do. Um, does the opiate drinking game apply yeah. when Anthony does an impression of Opie? Let's punch that gun. When did I uh, do an impression of Opie? No, if I did an impression of Opie, no, would not you wouldn't have to. Wow, we got a lot of tools calling in today for some reason. <laughs> you guys usually help us out nicely. Yeah, yeah, Anthony, we got some clips of uh, the president in Harlem. Real clips. Real clips. Here we go. Uh, now I feel like I'm home. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Some people used to clean up the White House. We're black. Thank my pal Cicely Tyson for being here today. She did a great job under not the easiest circumstances. Maybe we should give her another acting award. What? <laughs> another <laughs> acting award or that something like that. Uh, hey, shut up. I don't have my speechwriters no more. <laughs> uh, acting award or maybe a Golden Globe. <laughs> like, what is the? I think he means Academy Award. And when, uh, wh while this was going on in the background, you know, I'm uh, answering email and I'm, I'm kind of listening with a half an ear and they're bringing yeah. the, uh, these people one by one up to welcome uh, the president to Harlem. Yeah. I swear to God, I even turned to either Ben or Stinky and I go, why is Whoopi Goldberg uh, going on the stage and <gasps> doing like 10 or 12 different characters? Swear to God, I didn't. I I didn't even realize it was for real. Yeah, I really thought it was show again. I thought it was just Whoopi Goldberg doing, <laughs> you know, all these different voices. No, no, no. <laughs> More uh, audio. I want to thank Charlie Rangel. I never will forget. Yeah. I was sitting one morning in South Florida, and I picked up the phone. And I called Charlie, and I said. You think you could find me some office space in Harlem? <laughs> <laughs> he said, did the sun come up this morning? <laughs> <laughs> you think you could find me some office and space in Harlem? And 24 hours, here we were. <laughs> and I went, oh, damn, it did it. <laughs> <laughs> in 24 hours, what took him so long? <laughs> you think you could find me some office space in Harlem, yo? Because I need all the space that's off the hook, y'all. <laughs> he ain't nothing but a hillbilly mother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well. He's a true hillbilly guy. He probably make moonshine and all that. I'll tell you, though, you got to give the guy credit. He does. He, he embraces and loves the black community. He really does. He and likes, really loves, let me tell you. Likes the chitlins and the pig's feet. <laughs> no, he likes uh, some uh, booty. He, he likes, likes some of the black booty. He likes the... I, I really I think, think so. so. Little brown sugar. Yeah, baby. <laughs> mm. All right, here's more um, audio of the former president talking about his wife, Anthony. Yeah. I also want to bring you greetings from two people who are not here. New York's junior senator. And our daughter, Chelsea. I had to stay in Washington today because my mother-in-law had surgery this morning. And we couldn't reschedule that, so I ask for your prayers for her. And I want you to know they're thinking of you. And now New York has two great senators. I'm proud of both of them. Oh, he's got to kiss her fat, white, dimpled ass every second now. Every second he's got to bring her up. But he didn't even say her name. Yeah, she's the one who's bringing home the paychecks. Huh? Yeah, yeah, no you know, way. Did you hear this? Did you read so? the paper? Bill Clinton keeps $1 million in his basic checking account. It said he was a whiz in the White House, but he's not too much of a whiz on how to invest his money. <laughs> he, a million, you know your, your checking account doesn't pay you anything. It's, it's trash. It's in there to write checks on. And you know how uh, they found this out? I read this on Drudge over the weekend. Someone that works for the Post was with him when he went to the ATM to no. take some money out. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, I'm a password. Beep, beep, beep. And looked and saw the balance and says, you have one million some odd dollars in your account. Amazing. He keeps it in his checking. I need some money. That's a hillbilly move right there. Right? I'm surprised he doesn't have the passbook. Could I withdraw ten dollars from my million here? Make sure you stamp my passbook. <laughs> Sergeant Rob, what's up? Hey, what's up, O and A? Hey. Hey, if Phil's so right at home in Harlem, why all the police and civil, uh, secret service protection up there, right? He gets that everywhere. Yeah, right. Hey, uh, and you know why Hillary wasn't there? 
Because she was afraid of all the brothers. They haven't seen a fine piece of white ass up in there in a long time. Oh, oh come God. on. I think they like uh, They like Hillary's ass. Uh, Jay checking in says, Mother-in-law had surgery. Didn't she die in another excuse once? <laughs> yeah. My mother-in-law had uh, surgery uh, on her leg because she had a car accident. And uh, she hurt her eye, and she had an eye patch on, and <laughs> she uh, took it off, and there was no scar, so we fired her. <laughs> 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 my mother-in-law, yo, my mother-in-law is so fat. <laughs> <laughs> Showtime at the Apollo. Yo, he's probably going to show up over at the Apollo, Oh, uh, Wouldn't that be great? For amateur night. He kid. comes out, and who's that, Sandman comes out yeah, and grabs Sandman, him with the hook yeah, and then yeah. wipes off the log? <laughs> he's stinking up the joint. Let me tell, no, no, yo, yo. You notice he's sounding more southern now that he's out of the water? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I call up Charlie Ranger, goddamn, let me tell you something. God, tell you. I said, you get me a goddamn office building up there in Harlem? <laughs> Let's hear some more audio from Clinton's little trip to Harlem today. Hillary called me about 10 minutes before I came <laughs> out here Hillary. to make sure I was going to say the right thing. Yeah, that's why. Do the right thing. And tell you how miserable she is, she's not here with you. Oh, how miserable she is. You could have stopped so them for that. somebody drop her a note and tell her I gave a good account of myself today. Will you do that? Will you do that? He's, he's, uh, he's telling them <laughs> to write Hillary a note saying Bill did a good job. <laughs> oh, you my God, this poor this guy, guy yeah. is so whipped. You know what? He's one of the most powerful men in the world still. Uh, he's making money hand over fist doing these speeches. He goes somewhere, makes over a million bucks just to open his gap at some of these uh, events. And he still has to kiss that cauliflower ass of Hillary <laughs> everywhere he goes. You know, Hillary would have loved to have been here, but she's just a C, and I hate her. And I mean, oh, damn. I tell her to write me a note. <laughs> write a note. Tell her I've done good, please. You don't know what it is to live with this bitch. Please just say I've done good and I wasn't touching none of your black asses. Please, could you please oh. tell her that? That's his alibi. Oh, yeah. Yes, he had an alibi. Hey, I was giving a speech, and now you write. And please Please write in your note that I was uh, in public doing a speech between 8 and 10 last night. Because I really need that. And are there any good doctors for venereal disease around here? Because I've been feeling itchy and the dripping's starting and it's stinging. Uh, more audio, Clinton. I am honored to be in Harlem, in New York City, in New York State. Uh, United States on you the earth. You voted for me in 1992 and 1996. You voted for Hillary in 2000. You were there on the darkest days and the best days. <coughs> and I want you to know I want to be a good neighbor in Harlem on the best days and the dark days for all the people who live here. That's a little racist. Shouldn't be using the word dark. Oh. <laughs> well, like you're not thinking it, though. <laughs> I'm here on the dark days. <laughs> Wow, I wonder what floor he's on in that building. Yeah, he took the high ground, right? Yeah, I'm moving on up. <laughs> I want some things on the roof that go. Ag, 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 ag. <laughs> Pay me money. <laughs> dick. Yeah. dick. Bill loves. Uh, he loves New York, though. He really he does. does. He's out partying all the time. He was with uh, Elizabeth Hurley. Yo. Seen recently with Elizabeth Hurley. He was uh, mm. hanging with you two, drinking at some bar. This guy's got the life. Hey, Bono, I got a million dollars in my goddamn checking account. What you got? What you got? You know, I really like Joshua Tree, but Pop sucked. <laughs> you just see him hanging out, though? Hey, Liz, come here. Sit on my lap. <laughs> Would you like to be on the presidential staff? Let me just unzip my fly. <laughs> He's great, man. Hang on, you two. Oh, hey, Edge, Edge, come here. Give me that. Let me show you how you should have played that line. <laughs> <laughs> he is having the time of his life. He looks good, too. He looks like he lost weight. He looks, yeah. he looks younger now. We were talking about that. He, uh, It looks like he's uh, definitely keeping himself in better health. And he doesn't have the stress and pressure <laughs> of the press looking at everything he does. True. Woo! I love when this comes on the jukebox. Hey, Bono, you want another Guinness? <laughs> Come on, pussy, drink up. You're a fag, man. I'm already down 12 of these goddamn things. You see Liz Hurley's right there. You, I, I bet you, hey, come here, Bono. I bet you I tagged that ass before the end of the night. <laughs> I bet you. But now you guys got to back me up because that C Hillary catches me doing this. It's going to be hell to pay. I <laughs> 
I just left, though. I just left. (laughs) (laughs) Hanging with you too. This guy's living it. You know, and he's he's really the first president because years ago. President got out of office. He was an old bastard, and that yeah, was it. Were gone. This guy sick. just, mm, I'm tagging. Hey, baby, I was the president. Yeah, he came. And to you New know, York. I like the BJ's. <laughs> <laughs> and he came to New York. He can't run away from the press up here. You know, they're gonna be parked up in front of his office yeah. all day. But he can get it. Look at what he is. He's the pr- uh, former president. Very likable guy, yeah. and all the girls know he lo- what he loves sexually. He's in like they walk up to him just with their mouths open. Come on, get in line. Look, Bono, I'm getting more than you, and you're the singer, you too. Another Guinness, another round of Guinness. Faggot, come on, drink up, faggot. I know. Come here, Charlie Rangel, what you doing? I know the independent contractors up in Harlem ain't feeling his presence though. Too much secret service. Right. A lot of federales up there now, right? Right? Yeah, but he's not going to be up there a lot. Of course, he's going to be yeah. in his office, right? No. I think he's going to go to his office every day. Every day. Reagan did. Chop a quad. What else is he going to do? I'm just going to sit home and scratch my butt crack. <laughs> you know, he, he goes to the office to make it look like he's doing things. He travels a lot, but he, I think when he's home, he's going to be in his office. He's been traveling the world. He should be the new host of uh, Wild On on, <laughs> on the E Channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that would be good, right? Yeah. I'm in Bombay. <laughs> look at me. I'm in Bombay. This is great. We're going to take you to some of the strip clubs I got here. This is great. <laughs> We're going to see nine year old boys that do everything. We're going to see girls that shoot darts out of there. And, they could hit a balloon on your head, I swear to God. <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if he was the host of Wild On. That'd rock. Hugest ratings in TV history. Girl shoots a dart out of there and the Secret <laughs> oh Service just pounces on her. <laughs> Drop it. Drop the veg. We have more audio of Clinton's tri- uh, little visit to Harlem yeah. today. You know, when I was a little boy, <laughs> I had sequel cell anemia. <laughs> Marcus Garvey and Langston Hughes. The Abyssinian Baptist Church and the Apollo Theater. There you go. And I dreamed when I was a young musician that one day I might be like Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald and Duke Ellington. <laughs> dead in black. Well, oh my God, I never dead. made it to it play at the Apollo, but I have eaten at Sylvia's. <laughs> yeah! Dumpies! Oh, fool, kid, what? Yeah. No, Bill. <laughs> and I ain't dead yet. I may play there yet before oh. it's over. Oh, my God. If he picks up that effing saxophone and trots out on that stage, can act out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's close. That. Nice. Nice. that was a marginal F. Be nice. <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> How southern he sounds. I know. Just putting just, all those words together there. No, I'm being no nice. Power. It's just he doesn't sound like the kind of guy. He is definitely sincere. I am giving it to him 100%. The guy's sincere. What? But uh, as far as this is concerned, no, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying everything he said is sincere. But, uh, you know, I, I, it just looks silly. When, when you see uh, they, they brought a band out after he was done with his speech. And they start playing. And Bill Clinton starts doing that stupid white guy clapping dance thing yeah. to, like, some real soulful music that's going on on stage. And uh, what's his name? That Charles Schumer. Charles, Charles Schumer. Schumer. Oh, he's Chuck Schumer dick. is out there. And he's clapping his hands and trying to look cool. And it looks so stupid. It just Fake. doesn't look good. No. Fake, right. Yeah. Fake. Like that, like that um, movie that um, Steve Martin was in, man. What was his name? The Jerk. Was, yeah, The Jerk. Yeah. yeah, and he's the white guy. Yeah, trying to, uh, you know what with saying? his black family. <laughs> <laughs> it does. That's what Clinton's <laughs> like now. Know. I was born a poor black man. <laughs> <laughs> I think Clinton going to run a prostitute house up in that office. <laughs> I thought I told Yo, you ass to get back to 125th. Don't come back here with no money. <laughs> you holding out on me, ho? <laughs> come on. You know you're my favorite, bitch. Come on. Who you? go home to <laughs> let me go to uncle john i got me a fat hoopie it's, it's like the general lee oh don't go up there with that confederate flag <laughs> general lee uncle john hey guys hey, hey could, could you picture 
putting on stage the Apollo and that, that guy in the clown suit comes out with a club and starts beating him off the stand. Yeah. <laughs> Sandman comes hey, out. Hey, what you doing? What you doing over there? Well, that'd be hysterical, man. <laughs> he beats him off the stage with the cane <laughs> and then wipes the log off. Nice. <laughs> See you guys. We have a couple more clips. Just one more. Ha! One more. This is uh, Bill doing some shtick, right? Oh. Oh, oh two more. Is this God. one good? Yeah. I'll right, try. Go ahead. You know. When you're not president anymore, <laughs> people look at you funny when you walk by them in the airport. <laughs> they say things like, you look just like Bill Clinton. Oh. <laughs> or, didn't you used to be Bill Clinton as if you couldn't possibly exist without all that other stuff, you know? <laughs> He's using oh, the, pros the proper bonics. I, I doubt he just walked into an airport. Come yeah. on, who is she kidding? Meanwhile, if he did that material at the Apollo Theater, it would look like they uh, electrified the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see someone when they got a comic in the, the yeah, Apollo right, that's really right. hot? And everyone starts laughing. I swear to God, it looks like they just jolted about 50,000 volts through every seat. <laughs> everyone just... <laughs> <laughs> everyone just explodes. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Uh, one more clip. Ma or maybe they'd run up to the stage like when Joe was performing up there. Some other chicks, oh, it's Joe. God damn, I see Joe up close. And they all like run toward the stage. Let me find out you were watching. Let me find out you were watching last Saturday. I watch Showtime at the Apollo every week, man. What? Hell yeah. It's a funny show. I love that stuff. I love like, when the people bomb. Oh yeah. I love when no. they come out and bomb. And the, uh, the chicks in the audience start doing the stuff where they, they you know, they this. take both hands. Straight up in the air and then wave them over <laughs> like they're waving a 747 off of the tarmac. Get off, get off the get stage. Off the stage. <laughs> get off. I like when they make fun of Whitey myself. Oh, I, that's, that's always fun. They do that a lot, though. Hell, they, they do it a lot. Not anymore. I like the guys that come out and go, yo, what do you do, man? I'm a dancer. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm a got, dancer. And you hear everybody in the crowd go, oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to do a little dance for you tonight here at the Apollo. And and the guy is like just a flaming fag. Gets out there, starts doing these dances, and the people are like, get off the stage! Once again, the 767's over to the air. Get off the tarmac. Hey, Joe, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. Quinn just sounds like a blabbering idiot without his speechwriters. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of tough listening yeah. to him. It's the new casual, Clint. I don't need no speech writer. I'm a regular guy. He's a regular guy now. I'm in the airport, and people are like, hey, didn't you used to be Bill Clinton? <laughs> God damn, yeah, I guess I was. You know, like later, he, guys. Thank you, Rose. Like his protocol, people probably told him, you got to keep the southern accent down to a minimum, Mr. Clinton. But oh, when he was, yeah. Oh, it's all over now. now they, let's get the last clip on, because we got to take a break. We have a, Yeehaw. We have a band that's going to rock and roll today for us. Yeah. Man. Nice. All right, which nice. one is this? Just, uh, whatever, more Clinton, okay. Harlem always struck me as a place that was human and alive. Where there was a rhythm to life and a song in the heart. Yeah. <laughs> where no matter how bad it was, people held up their heads and went on. Hold your head up, boy. And where when things got good, <laughs> That's right. people were grateful and cared about their mm -hmm. neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You were always there for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you were. And I will try <laughs> to right. be there for you. Oh, yeah. And together, <laughs> we can be there for all of our neighbors around the block, around the country, and around yeah. the world. I love oh, Bill. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. I feel at home. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He just said nothing. Mm -hmm. He needs a speech writer. Like I say, right. people held their heads up high. It's great. And, uh, well, I'm here and <laughs> there was, whatever. There was nothing in that. Hillary yeah. Junior Senator and Chelsea and uh, <laughs> bum leg <laughs> on the mother-in-law. What a hack. He's doing plain jokes. <laughs> <laughs> How about the Americraft people? Peanuts. I gotta tell you, what's with the peanuts? <laughs> I was sitting in coach, and uh, but there's no leg room there. Let me tell you. Thank you, thank you. I'm going to be at Caroline's this weekend. <laughs> With the Iron Sheik. <laughs> We're going to have the Iron Sheik here today. Uh, we going to get the Iron Sheik? I don't know. We're, we're All right, we're working on it. Line that up. Bill Clinton, I hear, is joining the uh, Kings of Comedy Tour. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Ain't it funny how white people walk? <laughs> What's with that walk on the white people? Like they got a stick up their butt or something. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, Larry. Yeah, what's up, guys? Hey. This guy never stops, stops with women. I read in some paper that he went to some country, and uh, uh, one of the girls came up to him. And she asked for an autograph. 
he signed it, gave him, gave him the autograph back, and she said, can I have a hug? And as he's hugging her, he's saying, you deserve more than that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, you got to love that, though. Maybe I, maybe I should approach the former president and see if he wants to open up a personal account <laughs> with myself. Deal. The bank Free of delivery, you know what I'm saying? I got a million dollars. <laughs> hey, Fred, what's up? Hey, I, I just flew in from Washington, and boy, my arms hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so you people are great. You, you're just great people. <laughs> That's what you can get on my new CD, Bill Clinton's comedy CD. And uh, let me tell you, hey, at least it's not Norris, okay? <laughs> Bill Clinton, I'm killing over here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Right. Can't wait for more Clinton uh, sound clips and news now that his offices are right there uh, up in Harlem. He's right uptown, kid. Yeah. There is you it, go. Is our band ready today? Not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to rock today a little bit, man. Jim Norton in the studio. Old Dirty. Cowbell Bill. It's the deal. And we're just getting started, so... National number, 866-2774. Wow. Hey, Crack Whore, this is uh, Norm MacDonald, Crack Whore, and uh, you're Crack Whore listening to uh, Opie, Crack Whore, and Anthony. Crack Whore. Local 1027 is now one million members strong. The Sports Guys. Mornings, 5 to 9 on 1027 WNEW. Politically Incorrect with Bill Maher takes on the mob tonight and all this week at 12.05 a.m. on ABC7. Ugh, awful. <laughs> Anthony Pinnacle, horny goat weed. Hey, everybody out there happy with the sex life? Probably not. You want it a little more fun, a little more fulfilling? Try Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. That's what they call it. It's the name of the herb, Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. It's a botanical complex designed to enhance libido and sexual performance, and it's based on all the latest scientific research into sexual performance and well-being. And Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed, the only formula clinically tested, doctor recommended. In a recent study conducted by a Manhattan internist, 60% of male participants reported positive benefits from Pinnacle Horny Goat Weed. One couple said it. Uh, Pinnacle Horny Goatweed made their already torrid sexual activities earth-shattering. If you have some kind of a problem, or even if you don't, you just want to spice things up a little, Pinnacle Horny Goatweed. Get it at GNC, the vitamin shop, and other vitamin retailers, or call them up, 1-800-899-5323. It's uh, like an all-natural erector set is what they call it. <coughs> GNC, the vitamin shop, or other vitamin stores, or call them, 1-800-899-5323, Pinnacle Horny Goatweed. Opie and Anthony, 1027, WNEW. And we're back with the ONA show. 877-692-1027 if you're in the New York area and you want to get a hold of us in studio today. A bunch of our pals. Cowbell Bill. Yo. Old Dirté. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim Norton. <laughs> And a band that's gonna rock your socks off in a in a few minutes. They're yeah. Open that door. They're they're like yeah. sound check. Yeah, they're doing a sound check. And it's loud as f out there. The building's gonna hate us. <laughs> also, uh, the Playboy's out with uh, Jerry from Survivor too. Yo, where's the um? Uh, the <clears throat> wait, you can't find her. Yeah, that always sucks about Playboy. You try to find something in there, you can never find it. Yo, this body being airbrushed, kid. Yeah, huh? I'm not digging that I, at all. I'm not feeling that. I'm not, Still don't cut. You don't look like at the, the breasts? Nah, look at those things, OD. You can hang your coat off those uh, yeah. <laughs> nips. Oh, she yeah. got the big, gnarly, pinky tip nip things going. That's all right, though. You and guys are out of your uh, minds. What, what's the problem? Very <laughs> really right? solid. Right? You no, no, no. You know something? Jim, you, I'm, not, you, I'm not taking your word. I've seen what you go after. <laughs> Jim, you, I'm not denying the fact you'd throw that down after a night uh, hanging out at a bar or something like that. Yeah, and that would be a nice catch. But we're talking Playboy. It's all right. In Swank, she would be a killer. She'd be a head. Oh, yeah. She but, you know, to... Playboy, you're now putting yourself against... Look at the centerfold, OD. Turn to the centerfold. Now you tell me something. There you go. Yeah. That's, see? Oh, that's that's difference. Playboy. Oh, that's that's Playboy. Right. Oh, no doubt. No, I see you got to put her in a magazine where the next shot is a disgusting hair-filled cave <laughs> shot. You know what I mean? 
one of those big stretchy pictures. I can't get past the teeth thing. They look all grinded down and stuff. Who's what, teeth? hers? Yeah, something's going on. You're looking at her teeth. teeth. I gotta be honest, I didn't notice her teeth. <laughs> I, I, I noticed it I during the, looking at the I noticed it during the show. What's up with her toothpaces, yo? Hey, What's up? Kimmy. Hey. Our, 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 our pal is on the line. Kimmy from Survivor. What's going on? Kimmy, you could have done a much better job in Playboy. Why didn't you go for it? We've seen you naked. I know you have, but if, if you look at her boobs in the, in, in, uh, Playboy, and you guys have seen my boobs, her boobs look like, like, as big as mine. You yeah, know? Yeah, but they're not, uh, quite as, uh, perky. Yeah, she's, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it looks good. I mean, it's a very simple kind of spread. I mean, I think, like, the background is kind of boring, but she looks good against the blue. She's all right. Jim, you've seen both girls naked now. Who, who has the hotter body? Kimmy from Survivor or Jerry? Kimmy definitely has the hotter body, but I like Jerry better because I still think I have a shot at banging Jerry. Oh, <laughs> you totally turned uh, no, Kimmy Kimmy's off? No, Kimmy's definitely hotter. No, she's definitely hotter. Kimmy, where you been? Why do, why do you say you're going to come down and then you don't show up? I, well, you know what it was? My little niece had um, some little problems. She had my little niece had a problem. But she's okay, we found out. She got what? What happened to her? She, she was having, like, these really bad headaches and everything, and, and she had to, like, go have an MRI and some... Cat scans and everything, but it turned out that she's okay. <laughs> my sister just called me, but yeah, you know, she's four, so. Oh, you... No, I'm glad she's doing okay. Yeah, yeah, but that um... wasn't me laughing this time. And I'll take responsibility for that. I thought she was 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 she's almost, she's almost old enough for you. She's four. <laughs> You cure that by smashing their head on the corner of a porcelain sink. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, I'm, I'm going to come in in like a week or so because I did um, a photo shoot for Edge magazine where it's a little bit, you know, I kept my clothes on, but it's a little bit racy and fun and playful. Racy, yeah, baby. Kimmy, so, uh, Kimmy you weren't even approached uh, by Playboy? Playboy had talked to us through CBS, and yes, I was one of the people that they talked to. So why, why didn't you uh, take it off? We all know you're not shy. <laughs> um, honest, honestly, I think that the, the money that they were coming out with, um, I'd like to get, you know do something more How much? serious. How much they offer? They were starting in the area of about three hundred thousand dollars, and that's really not like yeah. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, you need a pimp to work them. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, even if they they, they were doing like four hundred thousand dollars or so, I mean, after taxes and everything, it's really not that much money. Take it, to... run. What are you doing? Yeah. What yeah. what what did it, uh, the Edge thing give you? Uh, Edge magazine. A good time, baby. And no money. Um. I we haven't even heard of The Edge. Yeah. I know. It's a new magazine. It's only been out a couple months. Did, but did it's they give really, you 200000 so I went out to Vegas. Did they give you 200000 No, but I kept my clothes on. Yeah, but what's the deal? Well, who what's cares? Kimmy, Kimmy, Kimmy you, know? you have morals all of a sudden? No, no, no. You know what? It's because I want to do something, you know, hosting a wildlife or environmental show or something. So for me, oh. I, if I did Playboy, oh, I have to wait a couple years until I'm really, really worth something, and then I can ask for a million bucks. You know, Jerry is pretty desperate. She wants no, she really is. She, she wants to be famous so, so effing bad, bad, and then yeah, she's yeah. like, "All right, I'll go for the Playboy thing right away." What do you want? To, what kind of nature show you want to do? Like uh, the crocodile hunter? Yeah, I want to be out in the dingo. No, I, I'd really. I mean, that's what I went to school for and everything. Is that, and I want to do something with wildlife or environmental documentaries. All right, we'll get you in a magazine where you can do a pig or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Peter. the kind of wildlife thing you want to do. Right. Well, Peter asked. I'll have you with a pony? <laughs> Peter asked me to do it like. Remember that clip? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have you do the new horse gag video. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> who, who hasn't who hasn't downloaded the horse gag video? And right at the point where she goes, <laughs> <laughs> just laugh their yam bags off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a spit take from a vaudeville comedy. <laughs> Kimmy, what'd you say about Peter? Oh, Peter wanted me to pose as a pig for a go vegetarian campaign. Yeah. Oh wow, that's that's. that's <laughs> Wow, that's just as uh, big as being in Playboy. Yeah, yeah. you're on your way to the top, baby. No, but I think that moves. when you guys see the pictures that I did in Edge magazine, you guys will actually like them. Can we spank to them, you think? Are they spank worthy? I, I think they're spankable. Some of them are definitely spankable. Because mm. it was so funny, because I was in Vegas when we did the photo shoot, and in some of the shots I'm wearing lingerie, and we were just running around Vegas, like jumping out of the car, having the pictures taken, and then like jumping back in the car, because you're not supposed to do like... You know, commercial photography in Vegas. Right. What type of uh, shenanigans were going on there? <laughs> All kinds. All kinds of no good nonsense. You piped down over there, Norton. <laughs> you just piped down. Oh, boy, oh, boy. For the love of Eve. <laughs> oh, gosh. What do you think you're doing over there? <laughs> but it was, it was so funny because I was wearing, like, these big, huge, like, F me pumps. Yeah, and little yeah. shorts. Is that big mouth of yours nice and open? Oh, oh yeah, and 
a couple of them that are open. <laughs> That's good. I like when you open that up. Oh, yeah. But just like walking through the casinos, like we were walking through Paris and the Bellagio and stuff, and I had like four or five guys with me, and I had like my hair all done. I had like really like big makeup on. You guys know I don't like wear tons of makeup. And I was just like walking around, and everybody's head was turning. Like, oh my God, who is this? She's a sinner. It's like people were taking their small children out of the hotel. Don't look at in her. In Vegas, in Vegas, they're used wow. to seeing that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, but not not like just like through the casino. Did you have sexual intercourse with anybody that night? No, I did not. Jesus. Why not? When was the last time you had sex, Kimmy? Didn't know. <laughs> what do you think? What time is it? A couple hours ago. What really? What celebrity's uh, life did you ruin this time? <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to me. Any any celebrities recently uh, hitting on you? Oh, can I out? tell you a funny story? Absolutely. You know who I actually ran into the other last week twice? Oh. Kevin James. Kevin James. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> You know, nothing. We just kind of like looked at each other. No, but um, it was funny because because one day one night he was up at uh, Wall Street. And um, it was it was just really funny because we ended up just like talking to each other, and I'm like, oh. um, I didn't tell everybody that we were doing it. Oh, what did he say? He's like, he's like. Did he believe you? Yeah, um, Kim, I think that he was a little surprised. Kimmy has never officially admitted that she did Kevin James. I will admit that she did Kevin James. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Based on all the him. facts, Kimmy. What did you do, Kevin James? <sighs> yeah. Got it. Right? Yeah, they just admit it. Yeah, just press I it. I did not do Kevin James. Oh, now oh, she's totally oh. backing down. You couldn't say that the whole day you were here. You couldn't say that, Kimmy. You fess up to it, or we'll tell the other one. No, you will not. Well, then you, you fess up to Kevin. Okay, tell the fine. Truth. I, I, fine, I banged Kevin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You cannot go ruin right. people's lives. <laughs> yeah, we can. All right, Kevin. <laughs> it's it's always funny. <laughs> you guys are so bad. Don't you have something new to torture me with, we like some new whipped cream? Trail of chopped meat through this show. It's just <laughs> behind us. Hey, did you give uh, Kevin James the hepatitis slurpee? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> That's my new favorite Jim Norton saying. The hepatitis slurpee. He'd have oh, to give it to her. God, you guys are so bad. But no, I w I'm going to come down there bringing like, my pictures and everything. All right, yeah, we would love to that. see you and your pictures. Yeah, and me. I want to come down on a Friday because I want to give you uh, give a big FU Friday to uh, Saturn of Smithtown, this bunch of rejects. No, we extended the whole FU thing all week, so. Oh, good. Well, then we can FU Saturn of Smithtown. <laughs> what do well, they, they do? Deny, you? deny you? You know, you know what? They're just idiots. Like, they had some guy totally rip me off in my car. Like, they went and they took my car in December, telling me that I needed, like, a whole new motor in the side of my door. Went and I got, I bought the motor. It turns out that's not what I needed. I needed a switch. When you're, when you're telling these little stories, <laughs> here's a good idea. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. <laughs> It's horrible. So you were telling a fascinating story about a switch? Fascinating. fascinating story. You know what, Kimmy? One time I was driving and I was trying to get through a light, right? And this guy is going really slow. And I'm like, are you going to hurry up? You understand here? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Jim. Jim, I'll make it more racy and exciting for you. Let's let's nice. think of something new we can cover my body in. Mm. Wow, Jim. Gasoline. You hit that, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll throw more stuff on you. Yeah, we got we got to play some more. We got to play. Uh, Kimmy, I honestly I would rather see you in Playboy than Jerry. Yep. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, without a doubt. See, because you guys know me now, and but like it wasn't always like that. Remember back in the day before you even knew no, me. No, we just said that you sounded really annoying, and that opinion hasn't changed. <laughs> <laughs> we think you're really hot. <laughs> Well, we just like you now. First impressions <laughs> always last. <laughs> I mean, why couldn't they get Colleen in the in the Playboy? Oh, yeah, that's or what we Amber, want to say. Jerry. Yeah. Well, I don't know, but I mean, I think that Jerry. I mean, Jerry's eyes look amazing with the background, and her body's cute. Eyes. So. Nobody no, cares no, about her no, eyes. Yeah, no. ain't saying it. Ain't cutting it. You know what, Jerry would be great in Playboy. Blair's cousin. Big gnarly, crusty. Nips. From the facts of life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would rock in the wheelchair or thrown out onto the floor naked. <laughs> naked. Oh, Old palsy box. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. box. <laughs> Cousin like Jerry, that's Davis's right. Face. Didn't the magazine, I think it was Hustler, do a uh, centerfold uh, with a paraplegic? Remember? And she was laying out on the bed, and they had to pose her legs. Oh, you... no. Yeah. How great is that? Hey, we could, we could do that on our show if you'd like. You want to do paraplegic uh, posing? Like a lingerie? Centerfold? Centerfold show thing? Why not? How will you know if they're really paraplegic, though? 
You know, take a bite out of their thigh, and if they scream, they're out. Oh, my God. That's, well, you know, there's always something new and interesting and exciting that we could do. All right, yes. Kimmy, come in and see us soon, all right? All right, I'll see you guys soon. All right, there she goes. Bye. Uh, Kimmy from Survivor fame. Ciao, baby. You're annoying. You hit that, dude? No, no, no. But she was naked in front of me, and it was really nice. She's yeah. got a, we've all seen her naked. She's uh, unbelievable. She was, she was she completely naked. Look, she had whipped cream on it her. It sounds like we're bitching about Jerry's body. Of course she has a pretty nice body and stuff, but I'm telling you right now, Kimmy's body is... Unbelievable compared to that. Oh, dude, she had whipped cream all in every crevice. Yeah. And then she went into the bathroom to clean off, and Norton <laughs> goes in there and actually oh, yeah, took the paper shit. towels, damn paper towels, and started wiping uh, out of every nook and cranny of her body. Three, she was bending over, and I'm squatting behind her, three inches in front of my face. Yep. I was so happy. Oh. Right there, ground yeah, zero. It was, sexy. Yeah, it was really nice. Hot. All right, we have to take a break. Anthony, after the, after the break, we're coming back with Clutch. We're so nice. excited today. They're going to jam a couple songs for us. We've been digging that one song, uh, Careful With That Mic. You know, the... Yeah. Ha, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. They're here to hang with us today, so we'll, uh, we'll talk to them in just a few. You guys have, you guys have, you guys have redefined debauchery. It's like a vaudeville show on acid. <laughs> Opie Anthony. The Cruel Circus. Ron and Fez. Middays, noon to 3, 1027, WNEW. Anthony Hotwire. Hotwire. Just because you're uh, getting travel online doesn't mean you're getting a good deal. Hotwire has quality hotel partners you know and trust. These partners give Hotwire special negotiated hot rates. They're not available anywhere else. And to make things even easier, Hotwire finds the best deal for you. All you have to do is pick the neighborhood and uh, specify what kind of hotel you want from economy to luxury. Check out these recent hot rates purchased by Hotwire customers. Five-star hotel on the east side of Manhattan for 125 bucks a night. That's $134 savings. Then a three-star hotel in the Universal Studios SeaWorld section of Orlando, Rick. $37 a night. Savings of uh, $62 a savings of. And a four-star hotel in Beacon Hill section of Boston for $57 a night. That's $102 savings. Take the Hotwire Travel Challenge. Look around for a great deal. Then log on to Hotwire and see how much more you save. Hey, rates change. So log on to Hotwire and take the Hotwire Travel Challenge for yourself. Hotwire. Opie and Anthony. 1027 WNEW. We're back with the Opie and Anthony show. Jim Norton in the studio. Old Dirty floating around here. And Clutch has made their way into the uh, into the studio, Anthony. Yeah. We are very psyched these guys are here. But I have a problem right off the bat, though, with Neil, the <laughs> I singer. I can't imagine what it would be. Dude, you dumped in our bathroom, man. <laughs> Who else smells I, that grass? I, I blew the spot in your bathroom. I did. It's the crunch-free bathroom we because there's the... no vent or no uh, windows. But you do have eye wash in there. Thank God, yeah, for the emergency dump. <laughs> Here's audio of Neil taking a dump. <laughs> <laughs> One of those. <laughs> One of those that leaves your uh, shirt looking like you rode through a mud puddle on your 10-speed. Uh, I was walking out there. I, said, oh, I think that's the guy that's on the microphone that's oh, just walked in there after me. I walked in right after you. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, we usually keep that a crunch-free bathroom because really, uh, there's no ventilation. we got to put the sign up because it's, it's so funny. The only people that will crunch in there is, like, guests of the show because <laughs> no you're one else wants the abuse. Well, I just want to leave you something to remember. Us by. That's <laughs> yeah, that's good. That works. <laughs> I gotta go to Steve. He's been holding for a long time. He's from Philly. Steve, what's up? Yeah, what's going on, ONA? Hey. Yeah, I'm just glad to hear you guys got a really good band like Clutch on the radio. Yeah, they're playing uh, uh, Irving Plaza here in New York on Wednesday. Yeah, I want to see him in Lancaster on uh, August 6th, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, but the Chameleon. Right on. So, um, you know, stoked. Heard you playing that first time when you um, put them on, uh, was it Careful with the Mic? I heard yeah. you playing it, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, Clutch on the radio? That's yeah. what I'm talking about. We've been, we've Big been... fan for like five years. Cool. Yeah. You got a question for them? They're right here. Hear that? Neil, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. In general? Yeah. Ah, just whatever comes to mind. It's you know, great. Whatever's uh, entertaining. Trying to figure out what you... Who, you, who are you um, talking about Astropithecus and Cray? Astropithecus, that's a kind of monkey. Like Missing Link. Uh -huh. Cray's a computer. Supercomputer, one of the first ones, I believe. Wow. What am I talking about specifically? Oh, nothing. Nothing. It was just a uh, just something you know, a list of absurd rhymes to entertain my uh, bandmates. <laughs> and, you know, uh, 
<laughs> didn't direct it towards anybody, and that's the God's honest truth. Cool. And oh yeah, Jean Paul, you're ridiculous on the drums. Love it. Thank you, sir. Play drums myself. And... All right, Steve. Thanks, man. Thanks. They're gonna they're gonna play for us in a little bit here, so I'll be listening. All right. Cool. You guys got together in high school ten years ago. Yeah, this August. Uh, what is it? August tenth. Yeah, it will be ten years since our first show. You remember the first song you played for everyone? I don't know. Like in public? I remember the first show, but I don't remember the first song. You know what it was? It might have been Arcadia. Yeah, we have a song called Arcadia that was on one of our seven inches. Right. What was the first performance you guys did? As a clutch was in Fort Reno, Washington, D.C. But was there, I mean, was it, I don't know. I, I want to ask, was it a talent show? I mean, you know, uh, was it, a, you know what I mean? What was it? It was just an outdoor... Uh, free festival. Free, yeah. yeah. They have them every week in D.C. Uh-huh. Just a bunch of people laying around in the grass. Jamming. Yeah, <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> Hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this girl has a great question for Neil. Leslie, what's up? Hi, I just want to ask Neil how I could get his attention on a show. <laughs> it was at his last show when I was trying to get his attention. I don't know how to do it. Take a dump in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no! I want to get good attention, not bad attention. <laughs> Man, you should smell his dump, Leslie. We all do. I don't want to do that. I just want to. I just want to hang out with him after a show. Neil, after the Comment? show. Oh well. Um, How do I get your attention? Um, flares. Could do that. Throw something at him. No, don't do that. <laughs> Are you a good-looking lady, there, Leslie? Yeah, I'm pretty good-looking. Yeah. I was just at your trade wind show the other day. It oh, was a good a, show. Did you have a good time there? Yeah, I had a good time. Yes. I had a real good time. Were you trying to get backstage or anything? Uh, not really. I don't. I didn't know who to ask. I was just trying to look at you through that little window. Mm. You guys playing that angle with the girls? Is it easy uh, for you guys? Yeah, you go well, out. I play that playing. angle. I'm a married man. So ah, I there you go. I knew there was something going on with Neil. He's like, yeah. oh, 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 oh. All right. <laughs> you want to know a good way, Leslie? Leslie. Yep. Well. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely a good way. Are I'm you going nervous. to the? Are you going to the show on the first, Jim? Uh, he might. Are, hey, Leslie, are you a goer though? I'm going to try to go, yeah. No, are you a goer? <laughs> oh, am I a goer? Yeah, absolutely. You'll, you'll go the distance, right? Absolutely. There you For go. For clutch, definitely. Look at that. <laughs> Neil, Neil, does this bother you at all? Not, I mean, you're married, and you know, and now you got the band, it's happening, and these girls want you. And, and I've been listening for a long time, too. Does it bother me? Yeah. Yeah, you no, know. It doesn't bother he's me. A, he's a little nervous. No? doesn't bother you, though? No, I'm just, just kind right, well, of shaking after the dog I took. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys at the show at Irving Plaza. Yeah, that's Wednesday. Uh, yep. All right, Leslie, thank you. All right, you. take care. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. We got Kristen from Philadelphia wants to say hi. Kristen, what's going on? Hey, how you guys doing? Pretty good. We're hanging with Clutch. I can tell. It's about time. God, I've been waiting to hear Clutch on the radio for so oh, long. A lot of girls like you guys, huh? Got a lot of girls at the show? Um, more and more. And, yeah. You know, five, ten years ago, it was just strictly a... Uh, Bunch of dudes, right? Like a frat party, basically. Not anymore. Like uh, one of our road shows. What do you like about <laughs> the band, Kristen? Oh, good God. I have to name one thing? Oh, just, you know, in general. Uh, oh, Jesus. Well, aside from the... I mean, they look just like uh, NSYNC. Uh... Oh, man. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. The fact that it takes intelligence to be able to enjoy clutch songs. Oh, 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 look yeah. at that. <laughs> look at that. Do you guys ever visit the Pro-Rock board? Uh, say that again, Kristen. I'm sorry. Um, I was asking the band, do you guys ever visit the Pro-Rock board? Uh, occasionally. Occasionally? Sometimes it's a little disturbing. There's, a, you know, a lot of nutheads on that message board that like to lie, but yeah. you know, it's, it's flattering. They're going to lie about us. I mean, they could <laughs> not be lying at all. What's the biggest lie you've read about you? Oh. <laughs> that, he's laughing. <laughs> He doesn't want to say. You want to feel that? Nope. Whoa, Whoa, really? Fine. That bad? Actually, they really don't lie about us for some reason. I wish they would. You don't think they lie? About us personally? No, about no. themselves, yeah. <laughs> you and the message board. What, you, you actually feel bad about stuff you read on message boards? No, not at all. No? Never. Oh, okay. Like, because that's just kind of comes with the territory yeah. now, you know? You got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ed, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. I've been a diehard Clutch fan since, like, 95. Dude, I want to say thank God for getting them on the radio. Cool. I'm going to the Irving Plaza show. I went oh. to Trade Winds a couple of days ago. I just want to say, Neil, you guys, man, I remember seeing Marilyn Manson. You guys opened it up for Marilyn Manson, and then I left him. Started going with you guys. You guys are great. Right on. Any way I can get 
to meet you guys on Wednesday? Yeah, sure. Just got a okay. flash too? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can just strangle Leslie when she's done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll push her aside and take the wheel. All right, Ed, hold on, all right? Oh, uh, beauty. All right, Thanks, cool. man. Well, you guys want to rock or what? Yeah. Hell yeah. They are set up out, outside the studio, and it's going to get nice and loud, eh? Cool. All right, let's head outside. Let's head out. Yeah, why not? <clears throat> we're gonna take their positions, and we'll rock. Well, a lot of people out there now. It's like uh, 30, 40 people outside yeah. the studio, hanging, waiting for a clutch. Can they start quick? Is it one of those bands that can pop on, or they got to? Yeah, no, I think they're all set, ready to go. <laughs> hey guys, Neil. This is going to be yeah, loud. Oh, all right. Well, just tell them to go when they're ready. Hello? It's going to be loud. <laughs> hey. So we, uh... Neil, whenever you're ready, we're well, here. Whenever we're ready, huh? Yeah, this is this is clutch, man. Check them out. Right. You guys ready? Live in the studio, Anthony. Careful with nice. that mic. Are you ready for another one? You're going to do a... Uh, yeah, we can do another one. For a while, what? Yeah, let's do another one, man. All right. Uh, we got Clutch playing Irving Plaza here in New York on Wednesday night. Highly Irving recommend, Plaza. Highly recommend you go check out the, <laughs> Where's the guys. Where's my money? All right, Neil. So we're going to uh, tune our guitars up real quick. 
And we'll do a song called Immortal that uh, we wrote with uh, Leslie West. Cool. Aha. Uh -huh. Leslie West from Mountain. The very you. same. Yes. I had to add that in like a real DJ. <laughs> Leslie West from Mountain. From Mountain. <laughs> you might remember Leslie West from Mountain. Okay. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah, let's go. It's clutch. Immortal. Oh, no. On the Opie and Anthony show, Jay Moore in the studio. It's Jay Moore. The whole that's party around here. I got to tell you, that's a hit. I already am uh, singing along to it. And I good? That guy rocks. That's Neil yeah. and the gang from Clutch. They're playing Irving Plaza this Wednesday here that's in New York. That's Clutch. Hey, right. They are Clutch. I didn't even hear the uh, vocals when I first came in. I was just tripping out on like the bass line and the drums. No, that's, that's why it. you got to come in here to hear it. Yeah, it was cool. out, out there, you can't hear the vocals. But it's still cool. They're rocking. Yeah, they're rocking big time. Why don't we take a quick break, okay? Yeah. And we'll continue uh, the party next. Clutch playing I'm Irving Plaza this coming Wednesday. Matter of fact, we got a couple pairs of tickets to give away to the show at Irving Plaza this Wednesday night. A few tickets are on sale now through all Ticketmaster outlets and the Irving Plaza box office. But if you want to see Clutch, give us a call right now, 877-692-1027. Oh, you guys are God. And Anthony. Wait two minutes. We'll say something really dumb. Let's bring in the incest couch. Anthony. Yes, open. The September 2001 penthouse, the 32nd anniversary issue, has hit the stands. I guess this is a new client and it's penthouse. Penthouse. Mmm. <laughs> Come on. What do you have to say about penthouse and the 32nd anniversary issue? 32 years of penthouse, huh? How many batches? How many batches have I uh, dumped out in the 32 years of penthouse? 
Oh, my God. I hey, you want to keep imagine. that to yourself, Anthony? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Literary content yeah. of such a fine publication that's smart enough to do articles on the two of us. That's true. Yes. Penthouse uh, did an interview with uh, me and Opie and also with uh, Jay Moore. And Jim Norton. And they do all kinds of things. They got uh, Attorney General <laughs> really? John yeah. Ashcroft uh, speaking right. his views. And hot chicks, things on video games, all kinds of stuff. Pick up the 32nd annual anniversary hitting the newsstands now. Penthouse. Our, 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 our. By Opie and Anthony. Serving New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island. This is 1027 WNEW. New York. We're back with the ONA show. I want to thank Clutch for stopping by. They're playing Irving Plaza here in New York on Wednesday night. Yeah. Philly, it's not that far. Come on up and check him out. Terry, what's going on? Hey, those guys rock. Yeah, we like the Clutch. They've been out for 10 years. How many albums they got out? Uh, that's a good question. I don't even know. <laughs> Which would be the best one to pick up? Uh, thank you, Terry. All right. Bye. Oh, we're getting an email here from uh, Diane. She says, what are you guys doing up there? You're totally rocking our offices. We're on the eighth floor. Who's playing up there? <laughs> <laughs> Someone on the uh, floor down below checking in. Diane. Diane, you should have came up. Yeah. Imagine what that sounds like, though, on the eighth floor. It's like, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Is this an office building? Like, cause they don't realize maybe it's a radio station up here. You're working at your office. Well, they're downstairs they're selling Amway. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, and I understand we have a few diamond distributors in the audience. <laughs> Boo. I'm a mortal. <laughs> I just want to tell you about the program. <laughs> you know, we also just figured out that we have some problems with our little uh, syndication thing. Yeah. Because we're on, uh, like, a 10,000-watt a uh, AM in San Francisco. <laughs> Amplitude modulation. Can you imagine how that sounded out there in San Francisco, clutch jamming on the AM dial? Like the old days. My Lord. Remember the old days of AM radio? Come on. <laughs> Music radio. <laughs> All right. Uh, Anthony? Mm. I guess we just got to tell everyone. We're not excited about the announcement we're about to make, but... Uh, we have our ten finalists in the Man Boob Contest. Yeah. Up for your viewing pleasure. I was just told that uh, our finalists were up. So usually we have a contest that involves a website. I go right away. Yeah. So I clicked. I'm checking. And then once I got there, I'm like, oh, why did I bother? This is the worst contest we've ever done. The worst. You're right. It, it's all the finalists. How many are there? Uh, we're, we got. We narrowed it down to ten. <laughs> ten finalists. Go Ooh. to go to opieandanthony.com. And um, it's just disgusting from the top of the page. Scroll down to the bottom. I didn't even. Usually I vote right away too when we yeah. have like the hot chick ass contest or something. Yeah. I, I scroll right to the bottom. I'm like, oh, here's my favorite. Let me vote. Now I didn't even vote because you know something. I don't care. I know. It's like, ooh, ooh, sh who should ooh, we who vote should I, for? Should I vote for Ralph with the Asian woman boobs? <laughs> maybe George with the one nice breast ought to get my vote. Or maybe I'll go all out and get Lil Stevie uh, and his tumor, and I'll vote for that. <laughs> what about the guy that's holding his, his full D and uh, he's cupping it? In his yeah, own head, cupping man. it. Mm. The sexy pose. Or who could forget Ass Man squeezing his into a cleavage with his uh, biceps? <laughs> Norton's over there with a lump in his underwear. You're turning him. <laughs> what about, what about I'm just the... thinking about Stevie, old pudding head. <laughs> <laughs> what, about the, what about the guy? His chest looks like a W, man. He's got pointy ones. Norton just took hotel lotion out of his front pocket. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're not going to spit on it for me like you usually do. <laughs> hotel lotion. Oh, God, Jim. <laughs> and then you got uh, King Kong Bundy with his, <laughs> with yeah. his D's. What that guy was at bar nine. Rolling. Pat. King Kong Bundy was yeah, there? Yeah, he King showed Kong up Bundy that showed up to Bar 9. It was like awesome. it wasn't hot, sweaty, and stinky enough in that place. It was like a battle royale and we just started. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just sitting there looking at each other sweating. King Kong Bundy. <laughs> Stay this double team. Walks in to suck up even more oxygen. <laughs> what a mess. Oh, my God, he was sweating. Uh, now, uh, I was like, I, I hope there's no mosh pit tonight because this guy's going to flatten me. I guess, Opie, that what the people do is go to uh, opieandanthony.com. And you get to vote for your favorite. Know what you should really do, though? I mean, there's some pathetic uh, guys up here yeah. in the finals. you you got to vote for the guy that would benefit most from having this procedure. We have a doctor, Dr. Pistone, who will uh, make one of these guys look completely normal. Yeah. Who's going to benefit most? Well, then I was confused because I was voting on the guy whose breasts 
I felt were the most attractive. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. It was like, which guy deserves to have them removed because they're so horrible? Now, is it, see, someone like Pat, if you Pat. voted for uh, Pat, Pat, he would get rid of his man boobs, but then it's King Kong Bundy. Yeah. But then what? <laughs> then what is he left with? He's got it engine. would almost seem more freakish to not have the huge boobs and still have that big gut. Look at Marvin. <laughs> Marvin's got banana boobs, man. <laughs> Where, Marvin, hold on. <laughs> Who's Marvin? Marvin's got like the little ones. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> fly out to the sides for him. Look at Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Both for Marvin. Both oh, my. Right. He's cupping them. <laughs> They're all hairy. <laughs> Somebody let the air out. He gets the operation done. All he's got to do is jog and he's finished. Yeah. yeah. Now, but someone like like Pat or or the ass man would wouldn't they just look bizarre not having them? Well, you would think. Ed. Look at ass man. Look at this mess. Look at this. What is a picture of his ass doing in there? Was that thrown in? I guess because he's ass man. Uh, he wanted to maybe trick people into thinking those were his man boobs. <laughs> wow, get rid of those. Martin. And then you got someone like uh, uh, George who has the one boob. Yeah, jo poor George. I mean, come George. On. Uh, it was a normal looking guy. A uh, normal looking body, and then he's got that one boob. <laughs> <laughs> one freakish deformity. A freakish. You know, uh, this is kind of fun to look at after all. Right? Womanly, <laughs> womanly boob. Yeah, that's a that's like a that's a small B right there. So do you do you vote for him so he could get that taken care of and then uh, lead his life as a normal human being? Or do you go to someone like uh, Lil Stevie, uh, who would have the boobs removed and then uh, he'd be left with. He'd be left with huge, giant nips. <laughs> look at them. Little, Dude, look, look at little Stevie. We're, Pop little, up little Stevie, uh, Ben, for, for Opie. Is little Stevie still in the contest, though? Oh, he is. Oh, yeah. Now, if you, if you take care of those, do you know what that's going to look like? Do you know what that's going to look like? He's the one that got, he has the female nipples. He looks like Melanie from the Voyeur bus. Yes. <laughs> Good reference. Good callback oh, okay. there, yes. Oh, the wow. German Shepherd uh, snout boobs. <laughs> German oh, no, Shepherd she snout. She was hot. She was hot. She's my favorite. Uh, really? <laughs> you like those? Well, that's coming from a man who went to Cone Boobs website. I love that. You like the boobs that are like the cones. What's yeah. the, uh, what? Uh, what? 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 He likes boobs that are like cones, no, like I understand German them. shepherd snouts coming out of his chest. <laughs> but I understand that. But what's the? There's a website dedicated. Oh to yeah, that? dedicated to just uh, cone boobs. You like cone boobs? It's like yeah, a it's yeah. like a condom with a tablespoon of salt in them. No, some of them are very nice. And hers were big, very old. Oh, she was nice. That was a little weird. Cone boobs? Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I like any type, you know what I mean? But it's just that. Then why would you like spend 20 minutes online looking for cone shaped boobs? I've seen everything else. So I figured well, get a puppy. Justin. <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? Hey. How you doing? What's up? Um, I was wondering if Meatloaf was into this contest. I'm not going to website. It's the gayest contest you've ever done. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know what though? It's worth checking out because there's some funny sights there. You got to yeah, see the guy with the Asian boobs. <laughs> you got to see the Asian boob guy. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. All right. All right take care, guys. Bye. Are we going to get any early voting results in from uh, Steve C? Yeah, Can he actually give us a, an early line on the voting so we can tell who's going to win this thing? Because the vote never changes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at Jim, man. He's He's got full C's there. Which one, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> the poor guy, Rolf, is just the sorriest son of a bitch on this site. <laughs> <laughs> look at those. Look, He's probably saying to himself right now, I should have never gone. <laughs> look, he's got them, and they ain't even perky. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, like, the ones you see in Easy Rider magazine <laughs> when, when, you know, Chainsaw's old lady is hanging off the back with her flapjacks. They're called crack hole boobs. <laughs> yeah. Snoop Doggy Dog porno boobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to bang my wife and look up it's Snoop. Snoop's hey, got a player. porno? Hey, he's got player. a whole line. He's got like uh, like volume one oh. through and Snoop's the coolest. Oh yeah? But you know, I'm I'm you know, I'm getting yeah. my thing going. It's like, hey player, I got some more hoes for you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna fire up a fat one and check out these flapjacks. <laughs> oh, Crack hose. Give up the nappy dugout, baby. <laughs> the nappy dugout. I'm like, I'm losing my erection, Snoop. Uh, the nappy dugout. <laughs> hey, Jay. He didn't say that. That's a good one, though. Hey, hey, you ought man. to take that from you. Hey, man. Yeah, know what I'm saying? Hey, right now, you're probably getting down like we are <laughs> with these hoes. <laughs> yeah, huh? Yeah, this is just a party up in here. <laughs> yeah, West Side's up in here. 
<laughs> no, baby. Yeah. Because bitches ain't ass but hoes and tricks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can handle this in the street, baby. F making records. We pimping. <laughs> so, yeah, my pimp hands. Tro- hey, your bitch chose me. <laughs> <laughs> you can handle this in the street or get into some j- That's okay. <laughs> I, I completely. It was a quote from the song, so I really. Hey, so we have our finalists out. That's cool. Darn it. I didn't want to have that happen. A little Stevie with those. That'll be the huge only one. Boobs with the gravy stains on them. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I was uh, taking a peek at Regis and Kelly today. Yes. And then they were doing this thing where they uh, they they had a live shot from Jones Beach. Someone backed me up on there uh, on this. There was a guy with a huge man boobs dancing around. Giant man boobs going Gelman. up and down, up and down. We're doing the uh, man boob contest, Gelman. <laughs> Get me man boobs. I need little Steven. College co-ed man boobs. I love that. When Kelly was out, they had college co-eds. I loved it. I had a boner every day, Gelman. They squeezed me out for college co-eds. Yeah. Like Why a... don't you co-host with Regis? You've only know. done it with Kelly. I don't know. Twice with to. Kelly, and you did a great job. I and love then... Regis. I'd love to hang out with Regis. I can't be uh, shown up by the likes of Jay Moore. <laughs> I'll be exposed for the retard I am. <laughs> I know nothing. My head is empty. I host a show. A game show where people have to know things. I don't know anything. <laughs> I can't even get the questions right. <laughs> it is so funny when they ask. he asks questions and he doesn't even know what he's asking. Yeah. The spaceship that went to the moon was the Rollo what? <laughs> Our read is not Ap- Apollo. I thought it said Rollo. Hold the cards better. <laughs> Hold up the car, not <laughs> uh, Fabershan. <laughs> Palabanis. Uh, Palabanis. Anthony, Anthony, what's up? Yo, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Uh, we're doing good. Yo, that little Stevie, that nipple syndrome he's got. We, we call that fried eggs. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Fried like, eggs. Yeah. Yeah. About the breast. Yeah, little Stevie's got the fried eggs. They're awful. It, it's like bike week. It's like on a bike week when you see the old lady. It is so rare you see a hot biker chick on the back of those bikes. Sorry. Sorry, biker chicks. Your cans, well, you can't ride around on a, a on a bike like a Harley that's shaking those things. Gravity's bad enough. Yeah. Then you add the shaky thing going to it. Those things are flapjacks by the time they're 22. You're loosening, you're loosening critical mass. Right, exactly. <laughs> With each shimmy, gravity and vibrations right, coexist. There are, there are things in the woman's boob that act like a suspension bridge. Normally, it'll last just like our own Verrazano Bridge out there in Brooklyn. Uh, occasionally, if it's shaking too much, you ever see the film of that bridge that's swaying and the, the car falls down and the dog's running across it? That's what the bike does to your boobs, ladies. And where does it end up? Falling right into the water. <laughs> Get out of it. Stop it, Gelman. Hey, we got Ralph. He's very upset because we're making fun of his Asian uh, <laughs> oh, Asian no. lady boobs. Hey, Ralph, what's up? What's going on, guys? Ralph. I just wanted to say, uh, that the only reason... Uh, my bad, my bad. Hold on, they have a tough uh, time with that word for some reason. Just say boobs. Uh, well, I figured because it's on a guy, it'd be okay, but... Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I was up to 250 pounds when I first started listening to you guys. Wow. And you guys, like, basically totally changed my mind, like, made me want to lose weight. I started popping stacker twos. I'm down to 175 pounds now. When I went down to the studio, and Jim just, uh, um... Yeah, but the boobs are weird, man. Jay. Are you saying yeah, stacker yeah, two yeah, gives yeah, you yeah. boobs? My name is Jim. I don't know. Maybe it's, like, my Italian heritage, like... Sausage boobies or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. You know something? No, don't feel boobies. bad because the more we abuse you, the more people will believe that you uh, you should uh, have the procedure done. Yeah, but I also was start trying to listen on Thursday, and some uh, chick uh, said I was cute, and I was like, I was kind of wanting to get her number because uh, I got around where I'm from, bro. All right, <laughs> that's horrible. Thank you, Ralph. Would hey, you let her? Man. Would you let her get to second base? Was he? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, we have to, we have to, oh my God, I'm pissed and we have to bring something up. Jim, can you get a bucket of AIDS and go upstairs and throw it on all the salespeople? <laughs> What's the problem? What's the problem now? This is exactly what I told Jeremy was going to happen today and, and, you know, a bucket of gangrene. Sa- you know, sales pretty much uh, runs our stupid radio show at this point. What now? Get, what are they get doing Get a bucket now? of AIDS and dump it on all their heads get upstairs it, get your right brief, now. Get your briefcase of anthrax. Throw a little hepatitis <laughs> in there just for good measure. What are they doing now? Holy ass. And I knew someone was going to call us on it, and I told Jeremy we're going to look like complete idiots today. T- please but no tell one me. freaking listens to us ever. Vote for the man boob contest right now, Anthony. I know you don't want to vote. 
Uh, right? I just did, and banner ads are popping up <laughs> like crazy. Ah! Oh. Ah! <laughs> All right, I just... Ah, oh, my God! Oh, my God! There go the phones and uh, the mics. My God, Opie, that's expensive equipment. This is exactly what I... He broke the mic. This is exactly what I told Jeremy and everyone else. No one wants to listen to us. We... God. Now you're cursing. We know how to do a radio show. Keep sales away from us. That's your job. Oh. And they're already calling us on it, and I don't blame them. Uh, Meat Curtains, good name, from Cleveland. Nice effing pop-ups when you submit your vote for the Man Boob Contest. Do you guys really need my 25 cents that bad? See? Oh, crap. Look, here it is. One. All right. Let me get rid of that ad. This is what I, to I told them. I am uh, computer illiterate, so I don't know what's going on. See, when you vote for something online yes, and you click submit your vote, uh -huh. all of a sudden uh, you get an option to go back to opianthony.com, the homepage or whatever. But before you can go there, bink, bink, all these banner ads start popping up uh, that you have to close down. It's like playing whack-a-mole on your computer. Yeah. They pop up and you got to shut it down. And then another one pops up you got to shut it down. Then they do that so they could charge money to uh, whoever they're... Uh, the pop-up ads. You know what? I told. You I got that, Jay? Yes, I did. <laughs> so right. it delays going back, and you don't even want to be on the page just, anymore. You know, the trouble is, I'm looking into oh. your eyes. You're looking at me like I look. I was looking at the screen during Mafia. <laughs> like, what, the is, what the hell is going on? You didn't get high. You have to get high and watch Mafia. It's an entirely different film. <laughs> you know I'm on record as saying I, I tried it. And you know what? I laughed like a five-year-old looking at a donkey D for the first time. <laughs> You know what? Don't vote for the man boob contest. We're not even talking about it anymore. Uh oh. I got something I swear to talk to God. about. Hold on. Hold, no, let us finish this. <laughs> let's finish this, because this is ridiculous. I told Jeremy and everyone that would listen that our our listeners are going to crucify us for this. They just want to yep. vote for the for the contest, and that's it. They don't want pop up ads. They don't want junk mail. They don't want to be sent anywhere. If you need to mm -hmm. sell more ad space on this stupid radio show, then put up banners. And if they feel like clicking on it, that's fine. But to tell people, are, you know, they're going to vote and all of a sudden they're going to have pop-up ads and all this crap, we don't need it. Who's the sales whore responsible for that move? Who was it? Do we have a name? Oh, no. Oh, well, that guy sure can sell. Faggy. He sure can sell. <laughs> he, can, he can sell. Making a mint. We t you know. Ah. Uh, Stupid. Don't... Uh, I haven't seen Opie that angry since he punched Paul Bond in the eye. Because <laughs> we tell them what's going to happen, and they, they don't listen to us. The listeners, they don't want to deal with that crap. Well, now you uh, have this in your arsenal next time you tell them to listen to you. You know when you get on, like, a, a porn site, you click on one stupid link, and next oh thing, my you, God. Next thing you know you can't, so quick. Next thing you know you can't even keep up with the, uh, cl you know, the click outs? Yeah, and, and the bottom has, like, 50 browsers right, open right. on the bottom. And ding, 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 ding. More porno for you. More porno. More porno. I'll just shut it off. Doctor okay. Franklin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is Anthony there? <laughs> no, he left. He went home. Anthony, yeah. Anthony, I have a question for we you. Have, okay. We, we have the Anthony puppet here instead. <laughs> yes. I, I have a question. Anthony, does it bother you at all? What? That Opie gets. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo 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 -hoo. It, you know, got nothing else to do, doctor. Don't worry about him. Like Dick. he's a doctor. Whatever. Oh, here she is. Diane, Diane from the eighth floor. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. You were uh, downstairs? I was. We were hearing you guys rocking the house up there. Sound nice and loud through your ceiling? Uh, yeah. It, it, actually, you're on the tenth floor, right? Um, no, we're floor. ninth. We're ninth. Oh, you're ninth. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, it was really, I tried to get up there and it, from the eighth floor, and it was really loud. So, what, are you just all of a sudden working at your desk or something, and you just Weird. hear the? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the California guy thought it was an earthquake. He dove under the desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you pull up next to the cars with exactly. the clickers in the back. It's just... <laughs> exactly. No, it was cool. I was I was bummed that I missed them. I hate that, by the way. What? When you pull up to the cars and they got yeah. the kickers. A $10,000 sound system in his car and he lives in his mother's basement. Yeah. You know, a, thir a, a good 38 would take care of that. I can't stand that. Jeez. Makes me nauseous. Wow, wait a minute. Are you single? 
A good 38. <laughs> Norton likes the way you think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am single, as a matter of fact. Why don't you come on up and you and Jim Norton can go to the uh, shooting range together? Cool. That well, sounds great. Talking about shooting are people. You, are, you, are you pretty? Um, I don't care. I mean, I'll add looking. <laughs> I don't know. I can't really comment, but someday I'll stop up and say hello. Nice. Right. Right you do now. that. Thanks, right, Diane. Thanks, Diane. Thanks. Bye. Nice. Uh, we should take a break and regroup. You take know, a break. They're coming in like crazy now. Rich from Brooklyn. Those F and A's are so incredibly annoying. What are you guys running? A cheap porn site? Makes us look cheap. One of the ads, one of the pop-up ads has to do with Howard Stern, and it comes up in big letters. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, that's what it says How many pop-up ads feedback. pop up? Uh, I just got two. I got two. Let me try now, and I'll see what happens. Um, I'll select, uh, oh, Jesus, I don't even know who I'm voting for. All right, now I want to go back here, so I click that. Oh, here There's comes another one. one for the fine people at uh, goldenpalace.com. There you go. I shut that down. That's all I got this time. Oh, no, another little one. I don't even know what that's for. Astrohoroscopes.com. <laughs> Call me now for your free reading. <laughs> I be predicting the future. Opie's going to throw something. <laughs> Tic Tacs just went flying. <laughs> and PT Engineer's not here to fix anything. Is this man still in your life right now? <laughs> you must leave him. Call me now. For Call your me free now. Reading. That woman set the black race back 20 years. Oh, it's done, too. She got busted. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Was she, had, what was she from, like, uh, New Jersey or something? <laughs> yeah. She had people, we talked to two guys that worked for uh, her uh, tarot reading card phone number that were just pulled off the street, two stoner guys, uh, like Bill and Ted. And they were like, yeah, we were just hanging out, smoking weed. And like she said, hey, you want to uh, take some calls and read some uh, horoscopes? I'm like, yeah. And he was sitting in front of a script. And he said the, the biggest thing was you had to keep him on the line for a long time. That was all you had to do. So it's like, all right, you get a little info from them, and you go, oh, what do you want to know about? Oh, my love life. Okay, let me uh, let me deal out the cards. I go, did they give you the cards? He goes, no, there were no cards. It was a script. He goes, hold on. What I'm seeing here is um, you've been in a troubled relationship, and of course, because they're calling a goddamn uh, phone line about their relationship. If everything was honky-dory, Norton, they wouldn't be called. <laughs> so uh, she got busted for uh, all kinds of uh, for like millions of dollars. See, but why they try to shut down her hustle? You know what I'm saying? Because it's a hustle. It, but still, if there's people gonna be calling, so then they they already gullible enough to call, they should get their money. To I agree with you. Right. I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? I think if you're, you're falling stupid. for a scam, suck it up, learn, and that's and right. move on. But then again, that's the way any armed robber looks at a situation. <laughs> <laughs> they stupid enough to walk. Let me tell you something. Old Dirty, last time you were in with Angry Angel, the Puerto Rican, yeah. you guys were talking about scams. Opie, they talked about nothing uh, on on uh, the air. When we left the studio, these two are hashing scams out uh, to the point where Old Dirty is getting pissed at Angry Angel going, God, that's crackhead, man. <laughs> You're not thinking long term. Can we get uh, uh, I'm just, Angry Angel? Yeah, Angry Angel, and you guys could uh, talk yeah, about see if some we of get the other scams. We'll rehash some of the scams Anthony we're talking went about. Back to the back office and couldn't believe this stuff. Everything from do. clothing store scams to blatantly cutting the tops off of parking meters with blow torches. You can get at uh, Home Depot. <laughs> uh, and every Everything in between. Home Depot wasn't as established as a as a location like the way they got it now. Right. You can go to any you know town and go to Home Depot. Yeah. Before you have uh, to go underground and get get your blowtorch. And let's take a break. All right. We'll regroup. Uh, as far as we're concerned, man boob contest is over, and uh, who cares who wins? Simple as that. <laughs> Swear to God. Tell them, oh. I want to know more about this uh, GoldenPalaceCasino.com. <laughs> go to GoldenPalace.com. I'm really com. glad that popped up on the screen because now it interests me. There you go. Now my mind is completely off of Opie and Anthony. Why go to Vegas I, when Vegas why can come to Why go to, to Opie and Anthony? All of a sudden now I'm on uh, Casino.com and, and you forgot what you were online for in the first place because you're stoned on the computer late right at night. You guys don't <laughs> you're even, in a casino. You guys don't even know, though. I should be Miss Cleo. I told Jeremy what was going to yeah. happen with this this mess. See? I, read, I told I read. you things will pop up on the screen. <laughs> and I told you the listeners would hate it. I'm seeing things popping up. <laughs> All right. If you're not in the New York area and you want to give us a call, 866-277-4WOW. Our friend Jay Moore in the studio. We got Jim Norton yeah. around here somewhere. Old Dirty and Cowbell Bill. <laughs>
the meaning of this slacking off? Dude, it's all in Whatever. The Opie and Anthony Show. A smorgasbord of idiocy. The greatest radio that I've ever heard. The September 2001 penthouse. It's the 32nd anniversary issue. It's hit the newsstands now. Check this out. The extremist views of Attorney General John Ashcroft. A pictorial of a hot, sexy spy with a military man. An interview with boxing champ Bernard Hopkins. Get this. No sex for 17 weeks before a fight. Ouch. Profiles and interviews with rock group Sugar Ray, Chris Isaac, White Sox pitcher David Wells, and, of course, comedian actor Jay Moore. It's right here in the uh, copy. Jay Moore! Jay Moore! The kid's hot. There it is. Men's health articles. Uh, penthouse pet Tara Patrick gives a waiter a very special tip. Ho ho! Suck it! <laughs> the hottest and fastest Again, motorcycles are penthouse garbage. pets. Garbage! Happy anniversary, Penthouse. No other 32-year-old ever looked so good. It's Penthouse, 32nd anniversary issue. Hitting the stands now. Pick it up. Opie and Anthony, 1027. WNEW. We're back with the ONA show. What did you just say, Opie? I didn't, I didn't catch that. <laughs> you caught it all, my friend. Jay Moore in the studio. Someone loves you in uh, Philadelphia. Oh, they just... Pete. That's the wacky phone line that for some reason... Uh, As Christopher Walken would say. I can't hear myself from my headsets, actually. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Oh, you're fine. Ben is really <laughs> mad at me because nothing works now. Well, ben, ben, Anthony, grab a mic and yell. Anthony, uh, your friend, Opie. What do you I, expect when you act like a jackass? <laughs> <laughs> throwing phones and things like that nature. Look... You're supposed to be a paid professional. <laughs> Don't take a watch and put it. Ben gets the, the broad oh, thing. Up. There's buttons all out of place. There's the commercials buttons. aren't playing. Dead air, you Look, dead your air. friend Anthony tried to do a live read. It was near impossible <laughs> because the microphone was spun around 360 degrees. Who knows? 720. <laughs> I almost lost my teeth. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Cow Bill. Sorry. Cowbell <laughs> Bill. I need more cowbell. <laughs> Gentlemen, I need more cowbell. All right. Moving on. Come on, let's keep the spirits up, gentlemen. No, we're fine. We're fine. We're back. We're here. Hell yeah. And we're well, it would have been funny if that mic hit Bill in the teeth. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> a console full of shattered teeth and bleeding gums. I got a lap full of phones. Go to Amy. <laughs> no, you did. Go to Amy from Philly. See how hot she is. All right, let's go to Amy. Oh, no, it Amy. went black again. I broke that phone. <laughs> Did you break that phone? Because <laughs> now you plunk it down, and it's like Get someone Schneider picking it up it. outside. Uh, hey there, Mrs. Romano. Get Schneider oh, wait, one day at a time. I got it. Hold on. Amy. Amy? Oh, good. Well, Did you try Hello? fidgeting with it? We Hi. fidgeted. It didn't work. <laughs> Amy. Hello? Hi. Oh, she can't hear us. Can you phone. hear us? <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, All there right. she goes. Hi, Amy. How are you? Good. Great. Very good. What's now, up? Amy, um, you say uh, what? I say um, I actually logged on to see the Man Boo contest the other day. Yeah. Uh, that contest was... is over. I don't know who Oh, won. I know that's over, but that's yeah. why I logged on. I uh, was looking at the rest of your site, and I saw the pictures from when you had someone in the studio, um, a very attractive woman who was actually licking someone's feet. Okay. And uh, my question is, how can I find her? Why? What girl is she talking about? Does anyone know? Remember, uh, some woman came in and she licked Stinky's feet. Oh, my God. It goes way That was a while ago. Yeah. Stinky, you remember the girl that was licking your feet? Yeah, the same one that took, uh, <laughs> relieved herself outside. Oh, oh yeah. remember her? <laughs> we, made, we made her go outside into the streets of Manhattan. Oh, and my take God. Her yeah, Amy. You're you so mean. Uh, are you the licker or the licky? You no, actually, actually, I would love for her to lick my feet. Oh, okay, because you don't want to lick her feet, because she just <laughs> lifted up that skirt and let it go. No, <laughs> no, no, no. So I'd have to pass on that. Isn't that interesting when you hear that coming from the bathroom for the first time in your life? And you're like, what? What? Oh, I got, I got to go to the bathroom. Well, see, now okay. I've been searching it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like this. It sounds... What is that? It doesn't sound like me. It's with the altitude. Uh, I don't know what we can do for you, Amy. I, that girl, um, she comes to the city every once in a while. Why? You wouldn't uh, want anyone else to do it? Well, yeah, somebody else would be great. But like I said, I've been looking everywhere. All right, how old? How old a girl are you? I'm 21. And you All want right. uh, chicks to lick Young. your feet? Your feet? Yeah. Uh -huh. What about guys? Uh, 
Uh, forget now, it. Now, there's plenty of guys out there. You don't there. deserve me. <laughs> but you sorry? deserve me. <laughs> one more time? We could, ha we could have you down here and have girls lick your feet. That's an easy one. Oh, could you really? Yeah. Yeah, but you gotta have cute feet. You gotta have these big corned, <laughs> yeah. hammer no, toe, no, I have very cancer like in the middle of your soul. <laughs> are, are, tons of men that want to do it, but I can't ever find a woman that wants. Are you hot? Yes, I'm hot. Can you send us a picture? We'll put it on the website and we'll go, ladies. If you want to lick this girl's feet, come on down. Honestly? Yeah. yeah. All right, we'll do. All right, send a picture to uh, our website. All right. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, guys. All right, Amy. Bye bye. Now, okay. what was Jay saying that was really funny? Oh, oh this picture of uh, Christine Aguilera. Yeah. In the post, it she literally it's from the marmalade song. She dresses up in that marmalade gear I to uh, hate her yeah. that outfit. She literally looks like Waylon Flowers and Madam. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like an eighty year old woman in back of the trailer park going, Hey, hold on, hang on, hang on hear my crystal meth. <laughs> crystal meth and grandma. Me, me, me. This the most picture, disgusting yeah. thing I've ever seen. She's got this big bulbous abdomen. Like lower abdomen, it's like a big a bulbous <laughs> fup. Does she have a yeah. big fup? A big fup. Let me hear you. Uh, no, yeah. sisters. Hey, sisters. Hey, sisters. And she really doesn't fill out the costume. Pink looks better than she does in that uh, costume, right? Pink is awesome. Her legs, like the top of her thighs. Yeah. You can see, like, <laughs> ligament. Her, her, yeah, like her tendons leading yeah. to her uh, <laughs> private area. Right. The tendons right there. That's it's not like, a hot look. You could have sex with her, you'd cut yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, oh, my God. Andy. I like that little Kim, though. Yes. I like pink. I would destroy little Kim. Pink looks better. And she doesn't. Christina Aguilera does not fill out that. Uh, Are you still into the Christina Aguilera? No, it's by me now. It's by Past me. She can really sing, though, man. She I can't. Yeah, yeah. She's singing. got a great voice, but she really no. can't sing. It's by me now. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. And Britney Spears said uh, she didn't have her breasts augmented. She said it was a Britney growth. looking great. She said it was a growth spurt. A spurt, huh? Yeah, and I said, you know what? That's exactly what happened to me when I saw him for the first time. <laughs> I had a growth and a spurt. <laughs> I had a map of Hawaii on my stomach. Uh, Angry Angel. What was that? Hey! He wants to brag that uh, he's we not... We won the vote. He's not paying this call for this call. What? We won the vote. Yesterday, Puerto Rico referendum. What, the Vieques vote? That's it. Yeah, but how long? Two years. We get to bomb that abomination country of yours for two more years. Okay, let's not get Don't into it. Don't legitimize that. it by calling it a country. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that Jay Moore? What's up? That oh, little dirt God. heap that you people keep running away from to come here. <laughs> you 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 defend okay. it. You got Isn't such pride, but it, I'm, on it, I'm on welfare, and George Bush gave me a tax break. <laughs> <laughs> you're Puerto Rican and you're on welfare. This is a radio first. Three hundred fifty dollars is coming in my pot with my neighbor's um, mailbox. Yeah, give give old Dirty a microphone because Ann was uh, saying you guys were telling Ann all those uh, scams you're up to. Oh, yeah. According to OD, I do crackhead stuff. Yeah. Oh. Angel, uh, uh, Angry Angel does uh, does crackhead scams and Old Dirty does these little, like, uh, business ventures. Yeah, scams. he does high-tech stuff. You see, Good hits, remember when we had the gas say? problem, guys? Yeah. When the price was, like, going for $3? Yeah. I used to go around with my boys. And we used to suck the gas out of your people, your white boys' on, uh, on cars. <laughs> and we used to sell them. See, he would siphon out gallons and gallons of gas, and then you'd go around uh, uh, the way and sell uh, the gas. We used to knock on the doors and say, hey, you want to buy this unleaded gas? <laughs> knock on the door. Crackhead. Yep. How much were you and, and now, now uh, OD, that's crackhead, right? Yeah, that's a crackhead scam. I, I understand. With the bad crack you know teeth with the gasoline <laughs> spilling over them. I could, I could totally see why that would be a crackhead scam. Come on, man. Why? It's a crackhead scam. You sell it back to the same dude you took it from? Because <laughs> how, how much, how much, how much money could you make doing that? Yeah. Angry Angel. Well, you figure a dollar a dollar a gallon, right? No, it goes like two fifty a gallon. And I used to fill up like five gallons. You used to give me, hit me over ten bucks. That's oh, crackhead scam. Yeah. Crackhead. Old dirty. Oh, right. I used to pay for a forty. Old dirty. And then he was talking oh. about another crackhead scam where you go to the uh, newspaper machines. 
early in the morning when they're full. Yeah. You put in your quarter, you take all the papers, and then you sell them on the side of the no, road in the my, traffic that was jam. My yeah, and that's not more crackhead. How, how many quarters are you going to get? You know what I'm saying? And then you need your initial investment of hey, 25 get, get, cents to you open the machine. So you lose your quarter on every paper. Anyway. <laughs> Puerto, Puerto Rican Gordon Gecko. <laughs> Uh, you're risking, dude, gasoline in your mouth for 10 bucks. You could drink out of a mule for 20. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, Norton? Yeah. Norton. Norton. It's Norton. Yeah. Now, Old yeah. Dirty, give Dirty. us an example of something a little more upper uh, echelon. All right, man. So, if, like, let's say this, this is like on the law of wrong on my ladder. Right. So, let's say you in a little, not desperation, but you need a little quick cash. But you don't want to pull a total crackhead. Nah, you don't want to do, you know, so you just go do hubcaps. Hubcaps. Yeah. Hub so you caps. steal some hubcaps and then what? Then you go wait for the um wait for the sun to come up, wait for the place to open, and you go sell your caps. Oh, at the uh the the wrecking joints. Yeah, at the hubcap place. That's too high class for me. I used to go into <laughs> I go I go to these stores with a pair of scissors and the, the clothes you want. Just make a little incision and go to the register. Hey, I need a discount because this has holes. <laughs> so he cuts the shirt and then goes to there and goes, give me a discount because it's damaged goods. How about, I, hey, Ed, remember the conversation I told you about the meters? What? Remember I used to tell you that we used to take the meters with us? Yeah, he would uh, cut off the tops of the parking meters, which now that entails some work. Can You're going to get can, some pain. Can I, ask, can I ask a question? Yeah. Stay more. These are two men that live in the United States their entire life, and neither one of them can speak freaking English. <laughs> I don't want to be in this country. You people got to suppress enough, man. Yeah, but you're taking that check from us, aren't you, you Puerto Rican? That's all right. It's enough. No, it's we, not all we, right. We, don't say you don't want to be here and take a, a we, goddamn we, check from the government. I pay taxes, you son of a bitch. We need my we ass off. Because so I'm, in the, I'm, in, to us. I'm in Somerset. I'm in Buffalo. I'm in, I'm in Cohasset. I'm doing the rooms, man. I'm out there seeing the people making money. You know why? Because every year when I pay... Hey, shut up. We can sing together. We can't talk together. Look, because every year when I get taxed 50 freaking percent on the money I make, it goes to you and your $300 welfare check, and you're like, hey, this country stinks. This country stinks. Well, then go back to Puerto Rico and learn how to play baseball, you monkey. Hey, Jay, look at your pay stuff and think of me. Oh. <laughs> I love this guy. How about you look at my pay stub and hang yourself? Don't give birth to my baby. Thank you, Jay. You know what? I'll I'd give you money for your baby out of my pocket. That's yeah. alright, because the government's taking it out of your check anyway. Well, a baby's a baby. It's called, it's called Medicare. <laughs> <laughs> then they have Frank Gorshin? Who was that? Back yeah. <laughs> <Medicare>, Batman. <laughs> Hold on. This guy, Rob, has something uh, that the Mexicans are doing in California. Rob, what's up? What's up, man? Hey. They were converting vans into, like, giant gas tanks. <laughs> and they would take a stolen credit card and fill the thing up with, like, 500 gallons of gas. <laughs> oh, my God. Park it on the side of the road and then sell gas to whoever wanted it. Yeah, I mean, you could just think of what happened if somebody would have matched in one. Oh, of I things. would love to see one of those go up, man. <laughs> Boom. I don't know if they're still on it or not. The other thing they're doing is they use stolen credit cards and they uh, steal trucks. They go to a dealership with a stolen card, put it down on the truck with the stolen card, drive away, and then that's it. Really? Yeah, because once once you put the down on it and drive away, they think that you... Yeah, pay but for it, and you're going to keep making your payments, but it's nobody. Yeah, but white people do that, too. <laughs> I mean, white people don't go hatchet uh, parking meters with a jigsaw for 45 minutes straight because they're all hyped up on crack that they bought with government money. On the money. crack. Hey, oh, the man. government money crack. Instead of government cheese, it's government crack. <laughs> angry, angry angel. Yo. Now explain the uh, the parking meter thing. Yo, that, okay. nah, that was well, my scam. Yeah. Well, well, blowtorch or some of uh, my cats got, like, I think it's cold. That's ODB scan. You're so Puerto Rican, you stole a scam from a guy that you were just talking to. That's his scam. Oh, no, that's everybody's scam. All right, well, no, that's all right, right Angel, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut, 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 shut up. And the cell phone is not, is not my scam or old dirty. That's, that scam is, is part right. of our, our, our All right, Angel, scam. Angel, shut up. Old dirty, okay. ex explain your scam. Yeah, we used to um stake out a nice, lonely street. 
But mm-hmm. we used to come in a day to see how the traffic was, see how many quarters and dimes was going in the meter. <laughs> a little recon. Yeah, yeah, a little recon, you know, drink a 40. <laughs> a recon doing scabs. recon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, we used to come back, at, preferably, hopefully it was raining that night. I told you about the rain, right, Anthony? Now, explain why it's better to do this if it's raining. Man, if it's raining, dude, it's nothing but a crime spree, dude. <laughs> because <laughs> cause why, why is that, though? Because, like, you take out the crime kid and those first it'll drive start falling and then you know it's over because you can make all the noise you want dude it, <laughs> it absorbs the sound exactly. the city is ours it you makes a, it's loud so you can hack off the tops of parking meters Yo, i should get a job with logistics in the nypd you want to give me a call man <laughs> <Word> <laughs> yeah they'll call you you know what i'm saying so <laughs> we used to logistics. wait <laughs> scheme the spy you know oh my they God. got a good four or five meters and you know bow go yeah. to work it used to take like a week to open them. So. <laughs> it's no joke. Yeah, it's uh, tough to get open. But you're not doing anything, so you just stay in your apartment. And Eric, hey. what's up? Hey guys. Hey. Hey, Russian mafia scam, the greatest scam in the world. They got a 900 number, right? And they got all these guys, uh, supposedly messengers, going to these big corporations delivering these packages. And the package was delivered, and the secretary says, "Well, we didn't order any packages." So he says, oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I got the wrong address. Can I make a phone call? And he would call the 900 number from their offices. Yeah. Racking up dope. Yo, that's all right, man. Yeah. I'm not I hate to saying. give the scam to ODB, man. I hate Oh, it. wait, wait. You get your own 900 number. Yeah. Call it. You wow. get your own 900 really? number. You hook yourself up. You put yourself in business. You have a 900 number. Right. Then you get you all these around. guys to go around. Then you, you go to the business and say, I got to call uh, my office. Right. And then you just call the 900 number and you stay on for, you That's know, a half you hour. Whatever, oh, you know, you rack man. up the money. Cha ching. Yeah. Ching, <laughs> ching, wow. kid. Wow. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a scam. That's Old some d- uh, angry angel can't even fathom. Old something. Dirty Bastard's life just went from black and white to Technicolor. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Hey, what a nice The scam. peyote has kicked in. Man, right. calm down over there, Old Dirty. Yo, I'm here to announce a new messenger <laughs> service. <laughs> serving the tri state area. Well, you know what really bugs me that when they ask you, what was your scam, you had to yank out hubcaps. I mean, could you have been more stereotypical? <laughs> yeah, really. Really? Do you bring a donkey with coffee slung over it? <laughs> oh, that's yo, that's my man Juan Valdez. Yeah, Scott, what's up? Yo, what's up, man? Hey, yo, hey, let man. me tell you, this is the best game, yo. I go to that great American hardware store. We all know the name. I really don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, ye
So you just yeah, drive in, and if you don't have money, you're supposed to take an envelope and mail it to them. <laughs> yeah, right. Mail them a quarter. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, like the honor happened. system. That's All right, happening. Mike. Thanks. Vinny the Racist wants in. Ah, uh, Vinny the Racist. Yeah. Vinny! You know, and they, uh, you know, this jack-off, Angry Abe, or whatever his name is, Ang- vilifies everything I've ever called the show about. You know what I'm talking about? Angry Angel? You don't like Angry Angel, Vinny? Oh, come on, Anthony. This, this kid, you know, they... This, they come over here and they, you know, instead of working, they want to try to scam. And this is how they get by by scamming people. I mean, they're proud of themselves. He should be ashamed of. He makes his people look bad because he should be ashamed of himself. Oh, poor baby, your wife guy is getting banged by PR, right? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Geek. Angels uh, talking to you, sir. Yeah, you're on the line with Angel, Vinny. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't really hear him. What do you say? Uh, Called you a I geek. Yeah. Would you like okay. to say Bye, something Vinny. directly to uh, Angry Angel, Vinny? I, I think I just did. All right, thank uh. you. Not as uh, Vinny, not as angry or as racist. Yo, it's, it's it's not the fact that when we get over here, we already are starting to establish a crime syndicate. It ain't like that. No? You know what I'm saying? We do this in between work. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, if there's an opportunity, you got to go work, get it. Yeah. When was the last time you had a job, old yo, dirty? I'm a, yo, I'm an independent <laughs> Yeah, we know, we know that. <laughs> Sometimes there's a 10-year delay. Right. You know, some, this will take a couple of years, right? No, and tell them. You, okay. you haven't had a job in at least a year at this point. Yeah, it's been a year, dude. <laughs> OD, what's one of the clothing store scams? Um... Well, not really clothing, just boosting clothes from... from, um, Like you'd get a guy on the inside that works at uh, one of the clothing stores. Oh, let me tell you, dude. We used to bring out duffel bags from a major department store. I'm not even going to say that. And then what's the the hardware store scam, too, where they go in and you'd have the guy make the key? Oh, son. We got old mom and pop store out on the island, right? Right. Roll up. Give him like four or five keys to make. Yo, pops here, yeah, start making these keys. Well, so like, he's cutting keys. We just boosting cases out the front. <laughs> Boom, you know how they months. concentrate on the key? Yeah. You really gotta watch it and make sure every nook and so cranny's being taken out. Nice. So they're watching that, and meanwhile they're loading stuff out the door <laughs> while the guy, the poor old guy's making his keys. <laughs> Holy ass! You're getting those good tools from Long Island. Yeah. <laughs> oh my but I, god! I, yo, I am not proud of that. I ain't proud of that. <laughs> You're not proud. <laughs> Boy, you found a conscience. It's the same thing with the clothing stores. They'd get a guy that works on the yeah. inside and just unload clothes out the unload back door clothing. on the loading dock. The e- I mean, the, the the easiest one was putting them in the garbage. You used to put like four or $500 worth of boots, mm-hmm. clothing in, a, in, in the garbage bags. Garbage yeah. day came. We had to stop the carding company. Yo, chill. That's all low right there, my brother. I worked at a place that I uh, I pilfered from. I did. My place of employment. I won't say exactly where it is, but they had, uh, I think the statute of limitations is about up to. Uh, they had these long tubes. It was a machine shop atmosphere. They had these long tubes of pure silver that they made contacts out of uh, for electronics. And they put it in these machines, and it would just cut these things into these very... Uh, uh, measured out little pieces for uh, contacts. And silver's very soft. They had the cage that they kept the silver locked up in, big eight-foot-long lengths of rod, about quarter-inch rod of pure silver. So I noticed you could put your fingers through the cage and pull <laughs> the silver rods out of the out of the box. It's like a Reese's monkey. He yeah. figured out how to, yeah. how to get the peach out from the mayonnaise jar. <laughs> get the ants out of the ant hole with the little thing. And, yeah, that's how it was. And uh, the trouble is, how do you walk out of there with an eight-foot rod of silver? Silver, very malleable, very soft. You could wind it around your legs, Yo. around your midsection, around your arms. Where'd you sell I'd it? I'd walk though? out of there like weighing a lot. <laughs> there was a uh, a place that said we buy all silver and gold. Any of those places, they check out the purity of it and then they weigh it and give you money. How was it good purity? Foot oh yeah, it was pure, pure <laughs> silver. Did they say eight foot rod? Where did you get this silver spring? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. They never asked questions, but it had to be pure because it was for contact. Right. How, How much uh, money contact? would you say you got per? Rod. Per rod, probably, <laughs> probably at the time it was something like eighty bucks, eighty bucks, 80 a, rod, bucks a rod, which was a great score back in you know the the eighties. Yo, Anthony. Yeah. Yo, what's up? You know the 
the guy who hires over oh, there. Oh, do you would like an application? <laughs> By <laughs> now, I'm sure there's plenty <laughs> of cameras. <laughs> this was before camera surveillance <laughs> really yeah. and metal took detectors. off. <laughs> and metal detectors, right. Hold on, Glenn wants in. Glenn. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, I, I, I tell all the spicks that are around, I congratulate them. I'm not no racist. They, they're special people in control. I learned to scam, and I bought a Mustang with all the money I made with it. See what I'm saying? What did you learn? All right, I saw this spick on the side of the road, a beat-up car, right? Yeah, chill with the spick, man. Yeah. Shut up. Listen. Punk ass. The right gag, you're in the studio. I'm on a freaking phone. Shut up. Gag, yeah, gag, yeah, glass. Right. I see this spick on the side of the road. Got <laughs> Seriously. Dirty, know, dirty man. spick, dirty spick. All right, whatever. All right, all right. Continue. Spanish guy on the side of the road with his hood up. And I'm at the light. He comes over. He's like, yo, man, I, you know, I ran out of gas. Can you hook me up with, like, $10? If you give me your address, I'll send it to you. I'm like, yeah, okay, Dick. And I run out of there. I do it with a nice car, white guy looking good. And I'm telling you, people were handing me tens, fives, two dollars, three dollars. I bought a goddamn Mustang back in 1990 with it. Oh, you used the same scam. You would go up and say, hey, I'll, uh. Exactly. You, exactly. They you, work for the Rican. You learned from your Puerto Rican That's brethren. why I say congratulations to all the spicks. All right, right. enough with that word. You did My that God. 1,500 times? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, really. I, I don't Sounds like it. too much work. Ryan, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey. I used to work in uh, Patterson, New Jersey. I used to run a company. Fantastic. And, uh, I had old dirties kind working for me. So uh, they used to go out for lunch, and they used to say, i, I got to go get some money. And I never understood it. They used to come back with a wad of cash at the time. <laughs> so one day, I just sat down, and I, I grabbed one of the guys. I said, what do you guys do? He says, oh, we go over to Home Depot. I said, okay, what do you do over there? He goes, oh, we go shop, and we grab a little, little something here or there, a faucet or something, and we bring it right from your turn desk. They bring it right to the return desk. Home Depot doesn't ask no questions. They give them the cash. Then it is. <laughs> oh, the old Man, Home, Home Depot, Depot scam is a big Home Depot is blowing up. It's probably it's just blowing up. 50 well, points. I, I used to have a little bit of scam myself. I used to own a car stereo inflation. And uh, every single time I would install a, a, a real hot stereo, I'd make a copy of the key, and I'd have the guy's address on file. <laughs> so I, I'd, wait, I'd wait three or four months, and it was repeat business for me. It was great. <laughs> so I used to go. I used to pay a guy, have him hop the system out. I used to resell that system. And next thing you know, the, the poor bastard was back in my shop four or five months later getting a brand-new system for a couple oh, grand. Wow. Yes. Hey. Come on, man. Look at that. White people, black people, See? Chinese people. We can all, all come together. Doing scams, we can all come together you know in crime. All right. about, it's all about the money. All right, it's all right. about the cashola, kid. The yeah, choice we're making. <laughs> Dan from Hoboken wants to know, what's the line between a scam and basic thievery? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, I got this scam that I'm working. Yeah. I got this angle where I An put angle. a knife to the back of people's necks <laughs> and tell them to give me their wallet. <laughs> yeah. This new wrinkle I put into my portfolio of scamming. I call it a gag. I need white kids in the nuts at the arcade and take their quarters. That's the new deployment strategy I have. It's a new strategy we have here at, I mean, at ODB Productions. You know what it is? A, a crime, just an actual, like, like if you're going to do something, like, you know, body somebody, if you're going to do a, 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 a crime that involves, like, taking the physicality of a person and shaking them down, it don't take a lot to do that. But a scam. You gotta think, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta think. Uh, the man. phones have exploded. We might have to stay on this topic for a little while longer, man. Yeah, there's a couple of scams coming in on uh, feedback, too, that look pretty good. If you're not in the New York area, you can get a hold of us by calling 866-277-4-WOW. More girls, more gooder. Hookers for everyone. You all got it. Ugh. Anthony. No longer will our penises remain flaccid and unused. The Cruel Circus. Ron and Fez. Middays, noon to 3, 1027. WNEW. A challenge has been delivered. I've got him under rock, but I'm not using
<laughs> Vince. I don't know if everyone else is hearing that, but yeah. What a tool. The Rock is on Raw tonight. I can't wait for that. Anthony, Kawasaki Sports Center. If you're thinking about buying a motorcycle, check out Kawasaki Sports Center in Pompton Plains, New Jersey. They carry a full line of Kawasaki's ninjas, including the uh, Ninja ZX6R, named Cycle World's best middleweight sports bike. Full line of uh, Kawasaki fire and steel accessories for the Vulcan Cruiser. Kawasaki Sports Center. They've been in business for over 23 years. Customer service is their number one priority. Don't try pulling any scams over there. Oh, D. I'm sure. We'll hear about bikes later. Award-winning service department to take care of anything from an oil change to totally customizing your Kawasaki. Stop in and ask for Gary and pick up a WOW sticker while you're there. Kawasaki Sports Center, located at uh, 566 Route 23 in North Pompton Plains, New Jersey. Five miles north from Routes 80 and 46, two miles south from Route 287. Call them up, 973-831-1930. Anthony. 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 1027 WNA. And we're back with the ONA show. Whole line just jammed. There's a girl that wants in on this scam thing. What's her name, Aurelis? Yes. Aurelis, what's up? Well, there's a lot of stores in Washington Heights. Not really stores, they're in apartments. And you go and you can buy, like, Gap Clothes, Banana Republic, oh, Jayco, yeah. at half price. In, in people's apartments? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? Old Dirty, you want to uh, give us a little uh, insight on this? Yeah, Aurelis, where you, where you buy your clothes from, the McChettles? No, I go up to 190th and Broadway. Uh, I, I see There's a saying. whole other world out there we have yeah. no clue about. But what, what, what I end up you doing is I buy them half price. Yeah. And I don't like a lot of the clothes. So I'll buy like the most expensive item, like a leather coat. I'll take it back. Maybe it'll be 600 I'll pay 300 And then I'll go to the store and I'll have $600 that I can use to buy whatever I want. That's right. So you I buy it at the apartment. Wait, what's and the apartment? Hold on, hold on. All right, this is what happens. Slow down. How does all the clothes get into the apartment? There's a whole team of the other artists that do their thing. <laughs> they just deal with artists. clothing. Right. They deal with clothing. They could, They get mass amounts of clothing. Banana Republic. All sizes. Banana Republic. Name brands. Polo. Well, you name it, DKNY, they got it. They got the watches, they got the cologne, the socks. All the, the tags are on there and everything. Everything's on it, dude. Ex All the tags, I mean. Everything's I mean. on it except except your alarm tags. Uh huh. So then you got certain vendors. We got vendors in the in the in the community. Yeah. Providing a a, a good public service, <laughs> I might add. Right. All right. I bought my girl a Prada bag for fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then they go yeah. and they buy their mass quantities of clothing they got for that weekend. Yeah. So then you go upstairs, boom, boom, boom. You know, little rice and beans going. There's a little merengue. You know, lady escorts you to the back where the clothes are. There's a rack. There's all types of sizes, colors, and everything. Whatever I, you want. I had no clue that this was going. So you on. buy it. Yeah, you but buy then it. you could take it back to the original store that it was stolen from if, in the first if, place. If you're not you can't satisfied, do it in the city anymore because they ask for gift receipts, so you end up going to yeah. Upstate or Long Island yeah. or Jersey. So you but gotta you get can... on a bus. Yeah, but that's all good, no, you though. drive. I have a car. <laughs> 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 you got a car. Good. Hey, you no know? one's fun. No one is weird. Like if Angry Angel just explained that, I wanted, I would want to strangle him. But when you explain it, I just. I giggle. <laughs> he makes it sound like a business right. venture. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way on. you explain nice. this crap. It's like all the weird apartments in Bad Lieutenant where you go to smoke up. You're like, wow, like they exist. Like the, <laughs> yeah, old, yeah. the old Mexican lady with the with the uh, cigar box of crack, right? Sitting and watching a Mets game with like the cracked out guys that you're arresting <laughs> in that special little crack spot that only Norton knows where it is. Who knew that the crackheads <laughs> love the Mets? Right. I, I didn't think they had time to be a sports fan. Kind of, what's the score? Right. What's you the gotta score be a crackhead like them of the man. game, <laughs> Deep. gentlemen? Deep. I was at the game last night. I talked to Daryl Strawberry. He looked me in the eye, and I knew it never could have gone any other way. He's saving it for the big one. <laughs> this series has got to go seven games. <laughs> seven games. Did I steer you wrong? Fine. You owe me money. I'm a cop. I'm a bad lieutenant. Uh... <laughs> Jay Moore. Harvey Keitel, wow. with a new one. That's nice. That'll be on display Harvey. at the Beacon Theater October 7th. Oh, yeah. You got the date. Aurelis. So, I'm hanging out? No, well, well, anything else to add? 
So that's no, good. that was it. That's a, I had no clue this I'm was I'm not sure on. how this Last radio time, show pulls off balancing clothing scams on 190th Street and a kite tell impression and what? intertwines them effortlessly <laughs> like you two. Know <laughs> I know what you're saying. Do you know what you're saying? Mikey. Rican. Yo. <laughs> What's up, Mikey? What's going on? Hey, man. Hey. Yo, check this out. Yeah. Hey, yo, check <laughs> this out. Like ah, this trench coat. Coat. <laughs> I went to college for free. It was a buddy of mine. He was in AA, and he, uh, you know, he was getting his life back on track. They said they pay for whatever, so a light bulb goes off in my head. I figured I'll go down to AA meetings. I went to about, what, three or four of them. I told them I wanted to go to college, and they said, all right, we'll pay for it. As long as I don't get caught doing any DWIs, I still got another two years. You're false. You're absolutely lying. Who said you said AA would oh, pay for it? You're didn't. absolutely lying. Stop. That is absolutely an abomination that you would say <laughs> anything like that about Alcoholics Anonymous. That is yeah. absolutely impossible, and you're, you're lying. You like, yeah. You are creep. Creep. If you screw up, then you got to pay lying. it all back. You're no, absolutely lying. lying. Alcoholics lying. Anonymous has will never ever give money to anyone. They'll pick you up from the no, airport, no. give you books. You are an absolute piece of they garbage. They didn't give me money. They just paid for the school. I they didn't, did not I pay for your school. You're a piece of garbage. An alcoholic. Alcoholics Anonymous saves lives, and you're a douchebag. You should drink and paralyze yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Vince from Philly. Yo, what's up, guys? You guys are the effing bomb down here. You guys are hysterical. Nice. Thank Philly you. in the house. Thank you, Philly. All right, now I got another Home Depot scam for you. <laughs> what's going on? Somebody, go, oh, somebody goes and gets one of those big truck toolboxes like you put on the back of a pickup truck. I'm going to get high and just go there and watch. <laughs> I know. I'm going to get really box, baked and just sit in aisle open, four and just watch all the Ricans boost and you stuff. Throw tools in it. Wait, oh, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. Everyone's uh, talking. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hey, Vince, dude, relax. Vince. Yeah. Vance, you, you, hold on. You, I interrupted you, so start over. You didn't hear people talking right in your ear as you're trying to talk? Uh, you guys are real quiet, so I didn't hear you. All right. Now, all right. what is your Home Depot? Yeah, back up. Go ahead. All right. You walk. You go into Home Depot and you pick up one of those big toolboxes for a pickup truck. Uh-huh. You cut the box open, and when you're walking around the store, you throw tools into it. But when you go up to the checkout, all you're buying is a toolbox, and you ask them to seal the box so that you're not walking out with an open box, and you just pay for the toolbox. Wait a minute. Don't they, they hear the tools rattling around <laughs> no, inside? No question. I know they. Pounds. They look inside toolboxes. They look inside garbage yeah, pails. Totally, totally I've I've seen that. They've done that when I bought. That's awful. You take a yeah, wrench. That's horrible. No, now listen. He sounded white as the driven snow. Yeah. He don't know how to do a scam. Check it out. I got a scam. You walk into Home Depot. You take something off the shelf, you put it in your pocket, and then you walk out the door. It's cra it's mad crazy, son. Yo God, God, you yeah, yo God, Rizza taught me this from uptown. Yo, on the shrimp I ain't lying about this scam. Straight boosting stereos. Doorbells, anything, <laughs> windows, yo, money. It's a straight grip move. You walk in, get an Anderson window. Maybe you need a bay window for your spot uptown. Maybe you got a place for your gumad, like out in Brooklyn Heights, a special weed spot. You get a big ass Anderson window for your bay window. Stuff that in your pocket. <laughs> Stuff the window in your baggy Puerto Rican pants with your ass cheeks showing. And then you just walk out the door, son, with the window in your pants. Pliers, <laughs> doorbells, lamps, all that money. Yo, you'd be like, yo, you just stop me because I'm Puerto Rican with these baggy pants on, money. And they're like, well, we don't want no trouble, hey, whatever. And you're like, yeah, you're right. And then you just steal a car right. and go home. <laughs> Meanwhile, you steal a car and then you get on your way, B. Yo, simplicity money. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Claude, what's up? What's up, guys? I, I think you're... Story, go ahead. My story is along the same lines as those uh, Gap houses. Over here in Queens, they got the same deal. But uh, the thing is with Gap and Banana Republic, when you return the stuff, if you don't, if they don't have your size, they send you a check in the mail in five days. So you're paying about 80% markdown on the product, and then you go back and return it, and they send you a cash check. You know what? I think the economy is going too good. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue syndicated radio scams so we can really F up the system. Because right now, you know, this middle class, upper class, Puerto Ricans with no jobs wearing brand new Jordans. It's really not working out. It's really not working out for everybody, this great country we have. The way, the way I go to the ATM and it just gives me money. 
I want to know what the Dunkin' Donuts scam <laughs> oh, okay. could possibly be. Where are we going, Jeff? Okay. It sounds like Crackhead, right? Hey, Jeff. Yeah, how you doing? Crackhead scam. Hi. What's huh? what's the Dunkin' Donuts scam? Well, what it works was when I used to, I worked there in high school. You steal the twisty goose. <laughs> <laughs> so you get you get salary. So they tell you on weekends if you ever go below five dozen donuts, you can close early. So what I used to do is I get all my friends in on Saturday. And we they said you can eat as much donuts as you want. So me and my friends would all come and eat all the donuts, and I go home by two o'clock, and I get paid for a full day. That wow. Is, that is the worst scam yeah. I've ever heard. You know why that type of shenanigans was that? And only a white guy a white guy would you want to hear the admit best to that. Were you in the man boob contest? <laughs> <laughs> you know why that scam would never work for a Puerto Rican? Because you actually have to get a job in order to pay the scam. Oh. Right, Jay. And if you think some Indian manager is going to let a Puerto Rican close up at night, you got another thing coming. You work theater when I October work. 7th. You work when I work, my friend. That's a cheap. All right, we're, I think we're done with the scam. Yeah, we're done with I that, do man. One, Enough blowing up spots. Yes, man. sir. I, sir. Be honest, what, sir. Yeah, uh, sir. There was a scam actually, um, and a black guy pulled it. Um, it's true. Oh my he, uh, God, here it's we true. Go. It's true. I can't even look it's, at it. It was yeah. in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And he put on a dress and he uh, <laughs> pretended he was a woman and he gave Jim Norton oral for twenty dollars. <laughs> And I had to turn to <laughs> No, hey, man, you know. No, and you got one from a tranny? Yeah. Re <laughs> Recently? No, it's years ago in New Brunswick before I knew any better. And How was it? Phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't realize the, the hand, big hands. Honest to God, I'm, I'm rubbing the back. And I finally <laughs> dawned on me. This is the first thought I had was, "Wow, this is a large back for a girl." <laughs> oh that was oh the exact my god! I had, and I just wilted. And I went home, and the breath was really bad. And I'm washing the uh. bad breath of a silverback off my mule. And that is <laughs> oh my true. god! Absolutely. Oh true. my! It smelled like, smell like Marlboros and Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> that was years ago. Tim, did you uh, did you when you were getting the trainees? Things happening to you, happening to you. I'm trying to be very delicate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the treats. Uh, when, yeah, when you were receiving treats yeah, on good. Halloween, apparently. <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, did you ever go? Okay, you know what? Now that I know what it is, did you? Th I think there's a dark side to Jim Norton that when you figured out it was a guy, you were like, okay, you know what? I'm not gay. But you know what? <laughs> This little trainee better do a good job. Let's see what it's like. No, and you I'm, just said it was phenomenal, so you must have gotten into it. it I'm telling you what happened. It wilted. It wilted. I'm really? like, I, 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 yeah, what can I yeah. say? I wasn't even mad at, at it. I mean, it was my fault. My well, how was it phenomenal if it wilted? Because I realized it was a guy that kind of takes some of the fun out of it. <laughs> you just said it was phenomenal. How could yeah, it be phenomenal I'll if you realized you had yeah. a member? It felt really good. I was enjoying myself, uh. and I'm rubbing the back of the young lady, and I realized... It was a man, baby. For, yeah, it's Leon When you start Lett. running your hands through hair. <laughs> <laughs> tattoo on the back of the neck that said USMC. <laughs> <laughs> I thought... Wow! <laughs> Well, that Yo, man, you want to reciprocate? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to untape it. <laughs> but once I do, I ain't started my hormones yet. It's still big. <laughs> now, how did you not know that was a guy? I, well, a lot of times that was, I was, I had just started. I was probably, like, I'm 33 and I was probably 20. You but were then you hear the voice, you got to know. Well, no, you know what? I, some of them are very convincing. No. There's, my apartment was a bucks. transvestite bar across the street. Yeah. Edelweiss. A, yeah, Edelweiss. And it's like a really nice, it's really a bizarre no uh, counterculture. Yeah. Cause Norton knew it. He, point, yeah. he pointed out one day when we're driving to Roscoe's for a game. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. I stop by really? there. You drive home really and you go, you know what? I have to keep driving right now. I have to rear end the car in front of me or else I'm going to make the newspapers. Oh, <laughs> Some no. Some of them look so, I will Get say, here. as a heterosexual male, I have been returning rental cars, driving down 43rd and like 11th, and just stood, sat there in my car and went, absolutely, I absolutely think that is a woman. You know something? Even though I, I know it's not. I've trolled a lot of pornographic websites, and any time a tranny pops up, you, you look and go, 
all right, but you see that twisted eye thing of a man <laughs> or the, you know, the big chin or you something. Know, that's, there's, there's, Adam's man, Adam's there's manly features right. that you but see this, on every single effing one. But, Anthony, this play, this is a business. I mean, they're not yeah. walking around because they like the sidewalk. They're selling ass. <laughs> so they got to convince you enough to slow down and stop and look and get the conversation going. So Hi. I don't know what they sound like, but I, I just know from walking my dog no. around there that's just like, God. Damn, nope. some of you men are fine. <laughs> <laughs> the only, I got a funny feeling that one of you could get me that funny feeling. Yeah, the only really. one I've ever seen that even resembled a, a woman to the point of not being able to tell. Rich is Voss. That, Rich Voss, yes. <laughs> Rich Voss. Is uh, Tula. Remember Tula? James Bond. Oh, the James, James Bond, Bond one. Yeah. She was in a, he, she it, was in a James Bond movie as one of the Bond girls. And then afterwards came out and said, I used to be a guy. Had the whole operation done. You know, so it wasn't even a tranny anymore. But you couldn't tell. Looked like a woman. That's it. Any other one, it's like, look at Miss Fire Island this year. Isn't he adorable? Holy jeez, look at that picture. It's a, it's a guy in a dress. Guy in a dress. All right, we got to take a break, Anthony. Oh, look at the time. I know, we're running late. We'll finish this mess next. Yeah. <laughs> it's open. <laughs> Don't be an a-hole. Seem a little drunk, Anthony. <laughs> Go after yourself, <laughs> Pinnacle horny goat weed. Old That's Dirty right. has used the stuff. He's busted three nuts on the stuff. He, yes. has a, he got his F on with, yes, with the Pinnacle horny goat weed, right? Here's the testimonial. Old Dirty, you take it, uh, but like an hour before, you're ready to get down. Exactly. And uh, what happens? I mean, they, they, well, you know, we got to understand that sometimes that we can't, you know, you're only going to bust three. Right. So homegirl maybe want three more. And then what do you do, right? Got to bust horny goat weed, God. Horny goat weed, pinnacle horny goat weed. It's an herbal complex. It enhances your libido and sexual performance, just That's like right. Old Dirty. It's clinically tested, doctor recommended. 60% of male participants reported positive benefits from pinnacle horny goat weed in a recent study. I do and it for the benefits. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's pinnacle. It's top of the line, right? Dude. That's what it means. Increased desire, frequency, and satisfaction during sex. Pinnacle horny goat weed. Get it at GNC, the vitamin shop, and other fine stores. Or call them up 1-800-899-5323. Hopi and Anthony. 1027 WNEW. Insane in the brain. We're back to just a few minutes. The o a Show. I want to thank Jay Moore for stopping by. Old Dirty, Jim Norton, and, of course, Cowbell Bill. I think yeah. my Cypress Hill impression, like, two, two seconds long. Yeah. Every song that we do sounds the same. Sounds the same! <laughs> <laughs> this song's just like the last one we did. We did! <laughs> Jay Moore on fire today. Yeah. October 7th, I'm at the Beacon. I'm at the Beacon! <laughs> I saw that guy at a Laker game. Be real. That is one big reekin, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what nationality is, but I wouldn't want to mix it up with that dude. He was big. Bigger than I ever expected him to be. Oh, Pink. Diane doesn't like us. That's all right. Quickly. She's, she goes, what's with the holy S and what the F? It's so corny. If you can't say the words, there's no sense trying. Don't you feel stupid saying that? Why well, do you Diane. put a firecracker in your seat? Right. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if um, maybe if you had some attention paid to your P, uh, you wouldn't be such a C. Right. Exactly. You kidding me? You know how many people use the uh, the alphabet game now in I their know. everyday life? Write the FCC, you stupid whore. Like, they want to say F and C. Yeah. You twat. <laughs> 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 you gunky. There you go. Typical dumb broad. Oh, it'll be funny story here. Interesting story. A story that uh, might uh, we might be victims of ourselves, if you think about it, because I think we might actually uh, fall for something like this. Oh, oh, oh. Bullicking scam. Speaking of scams, just broken up on the streets of Columbus. When men were... St can we say that? I, I hope so. Check if we can, Rick. Make sure they didn't dump out. Because it's in the news story. It's a news story! Are we okay? I don't want to continue until uh, I know we can... Uh, I'll speak in plain effing English. I will do more Harvey Keitel to cover. <laughs> <laughs> I will cover for you to see if you can say it. Where'd you go tonight? A couple huh? bad girls? They don't what? Go out. Oh. A couple bad girls? Where'd Son you go tonight? 
Baby. Smoke some grass. Look, the whole content of the story, you son of a bitch, is the fact that they were doing this. What a bunch of friggin' idiots. See, people expect me to lose my mind. I love when he loses his mind. It's so much it's cooler. <laughs> you, 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 it, look, what am I supposed to say? Compare it to an ice cream cone. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Anthony, oh. correct me if I'm wrong. But oh. I'm pretty sure you can't use that language on radio. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to read a story here. It's a new story. Dan Rather's going to do the same story tonight, I'm sure. Yeah. Dan Rather, he's Canadian. These sexy women would go around Colombia asking men if they wanted to uh, uh, put their tongue on their boobies. <laughs> no, that ain't going to make it either. They better make it. What? what the hell? I'm going to punch him. All right, then Rick's There's right no, the no reason to... Uh, As we wait, can I just really fast... Big Cab writes, I learned that Norton got treats from Jackie from the movie Risky Business. <laughs> oh, yeah. Remember the first hooker they sent? <laughs> you might want to call this number. <laughs> Boobies. That made it. Uh, boobies is great. Good kid here. It what a bunch of friggin' idiots. Oh, you soccer moms. The uh, women would pose seductively outside glitzy bars and restaurants and encourage uh, Google eyed men to stop their cars and take a closer look. After, um, what? <laughs> yeah, can't say Google eyed. Uh, what, what happened? These women would smear uh, a powerful drug on their breasts. No so that when, way. when the men would do what they asked them to do, they would all of a sudden become dazed, confused, and plop out. They would wake up with their wallets and cars missing. Yeah. <laughs> now, Rufus! they said a lot of the women in their late teens and early 20s have been arrested. Now, you see some hot girl come up to you. That's she bears her top, skin. asks you to take a taste. Uh, you, you do it, and she has drugs on them. So you're down for the count. They take your wallet and your car. Right. I'd find her. You would find her. Absolutely. That'd be one dead woman. You'd find her and she'd go, you want to again? Okay. No, she got me again. No, I'd find her and say, let's do it again. And I'd get a buzzsaw and kill her. You know what would be great, though? If you could find a way to get that drug on a stamp and then just start raping at the post office. <laughs> yeah, I got you so <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, Dan from Hoboken. I learned that before he got his break on the ONA show, Anthony sold his rod for 80 bucks. <laughs> hey. Uh, that's that's uh that's ten dollars an inch, right? In? That's right. Yeah. Uh, Tony. What's up? I learned two quick things. It always pays to be on hold to hear an f bomb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And O and A never fold under questioning. That's right. We didn't take anyone down with us. Norton, you're a sick man, and we love you for it. Thank you, sir. Jay Moore, you rule. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Jay, I had a brother. Fire. Let's go to Joe. Joe, you're next on the Opie and Anthony show. Hey guys. Hey. Norton, great show on Saturday. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, you've got to be a crackhead to like the Mets. Yep. And uh, white guys really know how to screw up a bit about scamming. All right. And uh, the joke's on the tranny because Jim's not gay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, uh, Rob, what's up? How's it going? Hey. Yeah, I learned uh, Norton got a Hummer from Leon Lett. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, they, they haven't forgotten. I'm surprised. I thought that would uh, oh, yeah. leave, leave their memory right Somehow away. Somehow Leon Lett, I'm sure, messed it up. <laughs> Leon Lett is a great That's reference. why it went down, because it was Leon Lett. Steve, what's up? Steve. I want to say what I learned today. All right, go ahead. I learned oral from a train. He's phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. Jersey Gary has a bunch of them. Marky Mark equals Marty McFly Anthony. It's been 32 years since 14-year-olds have been spanking at the penthouse and looking like glazed donuts. Uh, clutch rocks like an earthquake and makes California guys dive under desks. Ant's rod is worth around 80 bucks. And Mary Pickford references are priceless. <laughs> Mary Pickford. What about Mary Jo Kopechny? Ah, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not my fault. The bitch can't swim in a car on a head. <laughs> Fortunately, I had scuba gear on my side of the vehicle. I was able to ara, 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 swim to safety and uh, ara, notify the police in three or four uh, months. <laughs> John, what's up? Yo, hey. I learned that uh, Jay Moore doesn't know the difference between the House of Pain and Cypress Hill. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. Yeah, no offense, though, bro. I'm from Jersey. I you can. Who do you think you are, us? Stop with that language. No, the only reason I, I went into Cypress Hill is because actually Opie uh, was doing a little Cypress Hill freestyle over that track. That's right. And it made me think of the joke. I know the difference. I know my hip-hop. I'm from the home of the MNF and Outkast. I don't give an F. It was, it was good. It was, it was good. 
Maybe I should work that into my act. <laughs> <laughs> are, we got another minute. Hey, guys. Hey, Joe. Uh, good way to steal the window is to uh, put it in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yin yang party! Yeah. Yin yang party. Cool. What a jerk. I learned that biker chicks are loosening critical mass when they're riding their Harleys. Yeah. Wow. Andre, good one, man. Today I learned to always check for a U.S. Marine Corps tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> that's Ralph. Yeah, you Fantastic. Don't see, you don't want to see that. Oh, that's good. Man, the, your fans are smart. They, they, they pay attention. I don't know why. Uh, I learned that O&A always win in the end. Hello, Rochester. Yes. The guy who fired Rochester. The guy who fired us in uh, Boston had to rehire us in Roch today. Mm -hmm. Nice. A lot of Guidos in Rochester. Oh yeah. They wear Aqua Velva. <laughs> Aqua Velva. Really? Yeah. They drive around in Irox. That's Jim Rome's always calling them out. Crap the Chester. scent of Aqua Velva. Crap Chester. Mm -hmm. We gotta leave. We'll continue for New it's York. To Miami though. for Italians. Hey Matt, what's up? Hey, I learned uh, Norton's a fag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we got to go. What better way to end the show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On an up note? Yeah. Jay, thank you very much, Jim. Thanks, nice guys. God Old bless dirty, of course, you. and uh, right. Cowbell Bill. Thank you. Sure. Hello. Opie and Anthony. One is funny. One is sick. I hated my grandma. <laughs> Bitch. Precious this. The Opie and Anthony Show. Wow. <laughs> 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 And just sneezed. Get <laughs> <laughs> a camera on that guy. You're going to see someone wiping their nose. <laughs> hey, New York, we love you. New York. York. We got some giveaway to New York tonight, Ben. We're only on the air with New York right now. Give them tickets to the show. Yeah. Nice. You got a ticket. Um. Oh, oh, oh to go. We've been drinking this stuff all day. I just had some. It's actually really great. I had the cranberry. You yep. know what you're also getting with that is oxygen. <laughs> I need oxygen. <laughs> it's got eight times the oxygen of uh, normal water. And it's distilled for purity. But you know something? We talk to the people here. They only need distilled water. It tastes like crap. That's what they say. But then you oxygenate it. It tastes crisp and clean. Can I also put this in my iron? In your iron? Oh, wow. Oh, water. how about that? Distilled water for your iron. A cranberry scent to my DKNY <laughs> shirt that I didn't steal like a Reekin. Give it a try. Did you buy it in an apartment? It was given to me for free. The way white people do robberies, we give the rich gifts because the system is supposed to favor those who make money because you're supposed to work hard to get successful. And they right. go, hey, you got some shekels now. Here's a free suit, you rich prick. <laughs> what do you need, sneakers? You can get whatever you want. Now that you're rich, when you're broke, we don't care about you because you don't pay taxes. <laughs> it's all right, man. Oh, sorry. O2 Go has me all pumped up because of all the oxygen, in. Oxygen for health. That's right. Light and crisp taste, no aftertaste. And uh, it, it, it helps you out. Helps your stamina, and it gives you that boost of energy that you're witnessing with Jay Moore today. At. Keeps you focused and alert. Helps prevent muscle cramps and even back injury. Up to eight times more oxygen than any other bottle. Hell, this stuff gives you boners. Might as well say that, too. Oh, to go. <laughs> I think I'm not, I'm not a uh, wacky scientist or chemist, but I think oxygen very important to human beings. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that. O2 Go water. Pick That's it up. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, there's no oxygen whatsoever when you hit out of space. And I was wondering, when a plant breathes, he gives off oxygen. And when a human being breathes, he breathes it in. And gives off carbon dioxide that the plants need. Right. If you went to outer space... Oh, my goodness, a plane has crashed into the broadcast booth. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of fire. That's a lot of flames. Get away from that. You don't want to get burned up. It's hot enough as it is out here. Now, there's a ball of grace. If you took a plant to outer space, would it give off oxygen? And if you watered it with O2 Go... Grace just got hit with a piece of fuselage. <laughs> Something completely rendering him unconscious. I want, ooh, Sean Dunstan just had a testicle removed from shrapnel. <laughs> Harry, we would love to uh, keep oh, going to on. go. Us, but, has oxygen yeah, in it. But we have to actually get off the air. Uh, thank you, Harry. I'm going to finish my Sam Adams. <laughs> oh, to go. Oh, no,